Hello. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wolf Den Live, episode 148, the great Halloween spooktacular. <laughs> I'd like to give a special thanks to Sean Sheroff, Sher Sharonoff, and Rob Vetter for being sponsors before we started the stream. I am talking like this because I am dressed as Shoto Aozawa, also known as Eraserhead from the anime Boku no Hero. See, I didn't know we were doing voices, so I didn't practice my Michael <laughs> Keaton beforehand, so. Hello, I guess I'll just talk and whisper whenever the mask is on. And then just be, and then, and then just, then just be quirky when the mask is off. So, so. Will is dressed. Uh, it's very it's Halloween today. Yes, it's Halloween. It is actual October 31st, Halloween. Uh, we are in costume. Bob is eraser head from My Hero. Oh, Academia. you didn't want to say the, the the you didn't want to say my actual name. I forgot it already. Shota Ayazawa <laughs> from the Ayozawa. anime My Hero, Academia. My Hero Academia. Yes. I, however, only '90s kids will get my my costume. Yeah. I am the Bruce Wayne action figure from the 1992 Kenner line of Batman uh, Returns action figures. Uh, with most of the pieces missing. <laughs> I put it on screen right now. <laughs> Just a little zoom in there. Uh, I remember that action figure. Yeah. I don't remember it coming with toy with uh, accessories. Yeah, it came with the chest piece, the mask, the cape, the gloves, the boots. I am missing the boots and the chest piece. I have the shirt. Well, I just bought goggles on Amazon for yeah. $8. And they come with... Uh, I just Googled yellow goggles. And um, they came in this really nice case. Mm -hmm. They're fancy for eight dollars. Really? Then I put yellow electrical tape <laughs> on it. Yeah. That we had already. Mm -hmm. And these are wraps that I had from a costume many moons ago. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. I already had the mask because, of course, I did. Uh, the cape is actually from one of those like three foot uh, Batman figures that I have. You, like you can actually wear the cape. You might. Oh, so it's it. not a full size cape. No, it's not a full size cape, <laughs> and I kind of regret not getting a full size cape. Uh, the T shirt we got from T Public, which is still on our T Public store, that is actually still a thing. Um, and then I oh, bought, yeah. I bought the two foam batarangs for five dollars at Walmart. Do and, you have that shirt in T shirt form also? No, just long sleeve shirt. Oh, because okay. it matches the action figure. Right. right and right. then these gloves were ten dollars on Amazon. The reason why there's gold is because these are the stupid ass. Batman vs Superman gloves, <laughs> and I don't understand because there's no gold in the costume in the movie. But for some reason, Ruby Costume Company, which is on Long Island, decided to put gold on the gloves. Um, I had something important to say, but I'm sorry. Yeah. Lizdrin, five dollars super chat. Hey, happy Halloween to my favorite two dudes on YouTube. Thank, Thank you. you. Um. Uh, oh, we have another thing to do. Okay. Uh, Is it right if I take the mask off and put my... Uh, no, you glasses? must leave the mask on forever. Right, but I'm not going to no, see... you can take okay. the mask off. I just need to put my glasses on because I can't see anything. You are the one who usually gets the, yes. the Oreos. Uh, ooh. Mm. I know you're not going to like these, no. but I am all about I know you're these all about peppermint, peppermint bark. bark. This is actually the second box. <laughs> I couldn't help you know myself. I already opened them. I was going to bring... Peppermint bark Oreos. Here I was go. going to bring um, Halloween Oreos, you know, the orange frosting ones, yeah. and do a comparison to see if they really do taste like orange. They've already gotten them out of the stores and have moved on to winter Oreos, which are red. Oh, all the same. Yeah. I think the red ones are the ones that have the the weirder dye. Probably, the yeah. thicker dye. Mm. I'm a big fan of peppermint bark. These are incredible. I know you don't like peppermint. Is that I don't like peppermint? It just it feels like it's too much. Like the bark and then like it gets in your teeth. Uh, David Easley, thank you for the two bucks. Happy thank Halloween. You. Happy Halloween, everybody. Also, AJ, why did you say that name? What name? What happened? I Martha. It. Oh. <laughs> I missed it. I missed something. Mm -hmm. All right. There's a lot of little things again. Surprisingly. Yeah. Oh. As you may know, mm -hmm. uh, we record this every single Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time here on YouTube.com slash Wolfden. Correct. Um, tomorrow yes. is Thursday. Yes. At 10 a.m., Nintendo has oh, a 40-minute right. announcement mm -hmm. of uh, Smash Brothers stuff. And mm -hmm. it's the final 
Smash showcase before launch, which is crazy because it's like a month out. So. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we can't talk about that because we're recording this prior. Yeah. But uh, there were there were some. So I'm gonna stream it on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. Mm-hmm. So go to twitch.tv slash Wolfden at 10 a.m. on Thursday <laughs> tomorrow, and we will watch it together with AJ and Dan, of course, like we always do. I'll be rolling out of bed for that one. <laughs> um, but there, so there was a leak we talked about last week, I believe. Somebody yeah. uh, tweeted it at us, and we looked it up. It was either last week or the week before. Uh, that yeah. that leak ended up being a huge deal. Yeah, it was. They call it the Grinch leak because the mm-hmm. guy's name is Grinch or something. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it was pretty much confirmed fake. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if I could say who told me, but (laughs) someone was telling me some stuff. um, And that seems like I I would go with this guy. Um, Mm -hmm. It sounds like we're probably going to get Incineroar, who's who's a who's a Pokemon. Okay, and that was not part of the leak. That's just this is just news that I'm we might be getting Incineroar. I don't know. there should be a Square Enix character. What Square Enix character will we get? I imagine a Final Fantasy character, unless it's you know they throw in like I don't know Laura Croft or something. Ooh, that'd be a big deal. That would be a big deal, like classic Laura. I never considered that. Me neither. I was thinking more Final Fantasy. Yeah, stuff. that's the thing. They, they were, were more likely going to put a Final Fantasy character in there, like Squall or who the hell is Squall? Eight Final Fantasy Eight. Oh, okay. he's the guy with he's the guy with the stupid gun blade. Right, right, right. Um, what's his name from Ten Titus, or one of the girls from X Two? Sora. Sora, yeah. But I mean, if they wanted to go out of left field, they would have to pick one of their, um, you know, IDOS uh, acquisitions like Laura Croft or uh, Adam from Deus Ex. I think it'll probably be something very Japanese. Yeah. Um. On top of that, what else do we have here? Uh. Oh. And I think this is a very safe bet. Ken as an Echo Fighter. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think it'd be insane if we don't get Shadow as an Echo Fighter. Shadow's got to be an Echo Fighter. Yeah. I mean, and that, I would play as him a lot. I mean, it only makes sense. My my bet, you're hearing it here first, <laughs> Shadow as an Echo Fighter. Okay. Also, Proto Man. Yeah. I think we're getting Proto Man as an Echo Fighter. But... Again, we don't know. Is every character getting an Echo Fighter, or no? Okay. If they, I mean, if they, you can't give them an Echo Fighter, then you can't give them an Echo Fighter. But uh, it's 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 easy because it's just a reset. Shining a shadow, much. yeah, that's a palette swap, basically. Exactly. Same thing with Proto Man. Yeah, yeah, Proto Man and exactly Ken the same. even, yeah, except for his shield. But the yeah. shield in the uh, final Smash mm-hmm. that Proto Man is just retrofitted into. Yeah. Um, his shield is on his back. So yeah, they just so put his shield matter, yeah. on his back. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And, you know, if they were to make his shield be his shield in the game, that's also like an extra frame of animation that I'm sure is easy to... Right. And and there can be slight move changes. Yeah. So, uh, it doesn't have to be exact one for one. So, I, th- yeah. I think I think those are... I think Sonic, uh, Shadow, Proto Man, and Ken are safe bets. I think yeah. Ken is the safest bet. Yeah. But, um, AJ says, can't wait to wreck Bob as Shadow over and over and over again. Okay. Uh, people are holding out for Sans from Un- yeah, Undertale. Yeah, Hut in the chat. Let me tell you a little something about Sans from Undertale, Well, Tell me something about Sans from Undertale. You know, let's just go. This will be the first story that we talk about. Okay. Why not? Because everything's kind of a hodgepodge, right? Wait, yeah. We're going we're well, to talk about... Oh, we got to talk about the yeah, games with gold. That's the thing. Because it's... Next, tomorrow is November 1st, the first of the month. And that means it's time to tell you guys and gals uh, the well, free well, games well, you get. You're gonna have to hold off on that. All we right. gotta talk about Undertale because I already right, started. Bye. It's gonna bye. be when I write we'll the just, list. You gotta clump them we'll together. Just break tradition for all because it, it's related, and I don't want to put a break for in it. all of the generation that's after millennials, whatever you guys want to call yourself. We gotta talk about the games with gold, PlayStation Plus free games, and Switch Online free games. Don't forget about that. There's new games. All right. Um, we also gotta talk about the Nintendo earnings report uh-huh. that just happened. The PlayStation Classic. We got the full games list. Yes, and there's some controversy with that list. Yeah, it's a, it's there's some dumb games yeah. on there. <laughs> um, 
But right now, let's talk about this news with Undertale. Yes. It's bizarre. I tried to look into it mm-hmm. before we started, and I, I went into a hole, which, <laughs> of course, because it's Undertale. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. So if you go to the Undertale Twitter account, right, it's just black, and the, the, yeah, the name is black. Yeah. And it says, return here in 24 hours. That was yesterday. Okay. Uh, so today, there's just a whole bunch of like nonsense. It looks like it's it's tweeting out. Yeah. Today, it said, thank you for waiting so long. After all, you and I, we have both been waiting such a very long time. So to be here finally on the verge of connection is quite exciting. Of course, everything's broken up into three lines like it is in the game. Yeah. I look forward to creating a new future with you. Now, I show yourself. No, that's not I. That's an exclamation point. Now, show yourself. Delta Rune. And then it's it links deltarune.com. I think I'm yeah. saying that right. It's all one word, though. Mm-hmm. You go to deltarune.com. Uh, I guess I can go to it. It's this big page. It says, welcome. Please read these final warnings. Then take it in your hands. There's like an ep- epilepsy warning and all this stuff. Then there's a download windows or mac version and you download it and i think it says survey and you download it and it's a freaking full game (laughs) (laughs) um i was looking at the comments to see like is this the the next undertale yeah it kind of looks like it i i I thought it was like just a little tiny thing yeah but it makes you create a character okay it it says all this stuff and makes you create a character i was sitting there taking notes because i thought we were going to talk about it today and then uh, it makes you create a character, and then it says, great, you're not going to use any of this. You don't get to pick a character. And then it just gives you the game, and then you wake up in your bed, and you're just playing this freaking game. Oh, wow. I don't know. I didn't get too far in it. I don't know what the hell the deal is. Okay. But people think that this is the, this is to lead up to somebody going to be in Smash Brothers. Because 24 hours from when it came out mm-hmm. is going to be the Smash announcement. I I doubt that. <laughs> I highly doubt that. It was a big... I mean, Undertale is right up there with people's most anticipated stuff in Smash Bros. I, I get that. I understand that. But I feel like it's coincidental. I feel like, if anything, this is leading to like Undertale 2 or... What the next scheme that um what's his name Toby Fox is working on, you know? Yeah, I don't think just just because it's like the day before Smash doesn't mean. I mean, I'm sure we'll get to this, but you know they just showed off Henry Cavill as The Witcher today. Yes, you know that doesn't mean we're going to get Geralt and Smash. Let me read this Polygon article because yeah. this gives us more information. Designer Toby Fox updated both his personal and the Undertale Twitter accounts yesterday with a series of cryptic tweets. In 24 hours, something was coming. Those who guessed that it was a new game of some sort appear to be right, as the countdown has ended with the launch of Deltarune. Deltarune is a free download for Mac OS X and Windows PC. Thank you for making it yeah, Mac OS X. Seriously, it's a mystery to us what this game is as of now. Because Fox neglected to say much. There's some Undertale tie there, obviously. The Delta Rune is a symbol commonly used in Undertale, most notably on the chest of Toriel, one of its most important characters. And its title, Delta Rune, is an anagram of Undertale. But its website bears several warnings in lieu of actual gameplay of the story. The warnings are there may be moving or flashing imagery, you may have to override security protocols to use the program. <laughs> For public safety, you are advised to refrain from discussing, from discussion of the program for 24 hours. Whoops. <laughs> you accept everything that will happen from now on. Uh, if you're on PC, you may need to override your security settings to install Delta Room. That's interesting. It's important to recognize that according to the Undertale Twitter, this game is far from being done. In fact, the executable is named Survey Program. That's why it, it weirded me yeah. out. And the application itself bears uh, appears as, quote, the beginning. It's not complete yet, reads a pair of tweets in the string from yesterday. No, it is far from complete. Okay, so it's a game of some sort. Yes. And it's uh, pretty f- fleshed out, though, from what I could gather. Mm-hmm. What's the chat have to say? Um Boot Hut says, I'd shid my pants. 
If what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if if I'm assuming one of the Undertale characters are in Smash. Yeah. A lot of people I saw on the Reddit would be very upset if that if this is all leading to an Undertale character in Smash. Yeah, I just don't see that happening. All right. Well, if you're an Undertale fan, you have a whole game you can play right now. Yeah. Which is which is nice. Vanillux says, "Hey, nice scarf. Thanks, man. Go check out his channel, listen to his music, or watch one of my videos and listen to his music." Yeah. <laughs> uh. All right. Anyway, now we can talk about PlayStation Plus, Xbox Live, games. Yes. Involved. As always, but we do it at the first of every month. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> As always, at the first of every month, uh, Sony and Microsoft like to, tell, like to release the games they're going to re- give you free if you are subscribed to PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Games of Gold. Uh, so now, because we are upstanding citizens of the United States of America, uh, we are going to tell you those games that you are going to get and remind you that they're free. Download them. They're nice to have. And there are some good ones this month on both platforms. And of I mean, course, we-, we start with Sony... Um, these will be available on Tuesday, November 6th, the first Tuesday of the month. That feels late. I think it's just because of the way... It, is it? Is it always Tuesday? Yeah, it's the first Tuesday of the month. Oh. Yeah. Well, and that's... Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. All right. So, first up is Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition. There's, a, there's only one Bulletstorm game, right? Yeah. Okay. This is basically the HD remaster of Bulletstorm. Bulletstorm's been out for a while. I know. But uh, Full Clip Edition uh, has extra content, and you can play as Duke Nukem. Damn. Yeah. Bulletstorm was good. I, I liked it when it was I out. I wanted to play it, but I never got a chance to. We and have it. Do we? Yeah. Oh. I mean, unless I took it out at GameStop. Maybe. I might have taken it out at yeah, GameStop. Yeah, because I don't remember ever seeing it. Because uh, I definitely played it. Okay. And it yeah. was it was good. I liked it. Yeah, I wanted to play it. It uh, was what the new Duke Nukem should have been. Right. Which explains a lot why Duke Nukem's in. Yes. So just play as Duke and you'll get the Duke Nukem forever you should have gotten. You also get the slide kick. There's a lot of slide yeah. kicking. And he kicks just like Duke Nukem. Yeah. Does. It's very good. Uh, side note, speaking of Duke Nukem, there's a really good IGN podcast interview with uh, Scott Miller, one of the creators of 3D Realms who created Duke Nukem. Mm-hmm. And he talks about um, Forever. I like the development of it and why he doesn't really like the, what uh, Gearbox did with it. Mm-hmm. It's a good interview. You should check it out. That game was in development for what, like 15, 15 years? 15 years. Something? Jesus Christ. And it came out and it was adequate. <laughs> <laughs> At best. All right, next is Yakuza. Yakuza Kiwami, which I believe is a remake of the first game. Interesting. Is this a new remake? Yeah, I think. Hold on. I'll look it up. Okay, you look it up. Uh, and those games are available on PlayStation 4. Um, you know, Yakuza Kiwami, according to this, is in full 4K if you have a PS4 Pro, which is nice. Well, which, if you don't, you should watch my video. Yeah. Or if you do, you should watch my video and be mad at me because for some reason, people are either too into their PS4 Pro or they hate the PS4 Pro. Yeah. There's no in between. No. And there's one guy who was so, he, he was so mad you don't understand HDR. It has nothing to do with resolution. The two don't have anything to do with each other. That doesn't make any sense. I was like, you clearly don't know what YUV420 means. Yeah. You don't know 420. You don't know. You don't understand. Mm-hmm. It's because it's cause the resolution. Yeah. So no, no, no. It's, it's two separate things. He writes in all caps. Anyway, I'm sorry. There was somebody who was so mad at the even concept of the PS4 Pro. He commented on my video today. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, Yakuza Kiwami. Yakuza Kiwami is an action adventure video game developed by Sega Will and is a remake of Yakuza, the first game in the Yakuza series. All right, I Yakuza was right. Kiwami was released on PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 in Japan in 2016 and on PlayStation 4 in Europe and North America in 2017. It is planned to be released for Microsoft Windows worldwide Ooh. on Steam, but the release date uh, has yet to be set. Interesting. So yeah. Yakuza Kiwami and Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition on PS4. Uh, on the PS3, you get uh, the Jackbox Party Pack 2. That's uh, kind of cool. Yeah. It's a whole bunch of games in there. And uh, our Keto series for the PS3. Don't know what that is. No idea. 
Uh, and then on the PS... <laughs> next one's a good name. On the PS Vita, on PlayStation Vita, which is crossed by on PS4, so you can play these games on PS4, Burly Men at Sea. Yeah, baby. And Roundabout. I don't know anything about Burly Men at Sea, but I want to. Yes, you can take that out of context. <laughs> Jackbox Party Pack 2 is one of the good ones, because it has Quiplash. Yeah. They all don't... Not one has all good games. But the Quiplash is one of the best games yeah. for Jackbox. So I would... If you have PlayStation Plus, definitely download uh, Jackbox Party Pack 2. Okay. Because it's free. All right. Uh, there's a little note here. A friendly reminder uh, for fans of H1Z1. We have a PlayStation Plus Blue Shift Pack... Uh, perfect for players of any skill level. It includes a blue AR-15 schematic, pro gamer hoodie, and marine blue off-roader. All free for PS Plus members um, up until November 13th. Okay. So, just a little extra thing. Burly Man at Sea looks like a little cartoony, abstract game. Literally about big guys going out to sea. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. There you go. All right, Xbox. Xbox. Hold on, let me open those up. Uh, Spoiler alert, it's Battlefield 1. Yeah, um, the, for the entire month of uh, November. Actually, it's available right now, because sometimes they'll release it a little early. Oh. Um, Battlefield 1 is available on Xbox One the entire month of November. That's a big deal. That's a good game. I bought it and played it already, so this does nothing for me. Well, did you play it when it came out? Yeah. I wanted to. It's a sh- it's a short uh, campaign, relatively. So like you can breeze through that. You didn't play the multiplayer, did you? No, I never played the Battlefield multiplayer because it's always too much for me. Um, mm. But they've been releasing mm. like doing deals where like the DLC and stuff is free every once in a while. That's good. They, so I mean, it if you should get be. this and then like just wait a month or two and like the DLC will be free again. So uh, that's cool. EA is kind of learning. Yeah, I, I think, think so. I think I think they're trying to take some steps. I read back. somewhere that they haven't said what the microtransaction deal is going to be with Battlefield Five, though. Uh, like, they're definitely waiting for everything to blow over before they go. Hey, uh, we're going to charge you. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they did with Star Wars. They're like, "Yo, we're sorry about the microtransactions. We're going to reel it in. Don't worry about it." Yeah. And then once everything blew over, they're like, "Here's the microtransactions." Yeah, yeah. So yeah. All my phone on Xbox One is uh, Battlefield 1. And then from November 16th to December 15th is Race the Sun. Don't know what that is. Oh! Bob knows what that, that is. That is a game. <laughs> I've seen this. Where have I seen this? Unless I'm thinking of a band. I think I'm thinking of a band. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what this is. Okay. I'm thinking of a band. All right. And then on the Xbox 360, which, again, you can play these games on your Xbox One through backwards compatibility. Uh, starting on November 1st, technically today, it's available today, uh, the original Assassin's Creed will be free to download. Um, so if you want to see where the series started, spoiler alert, not great. <laughs> <laughs> they should remaster that does game. not hold up well at all, um, but it's free. Um, and that's available till November 15th. And then on November 16th, uh dante's inferno will be free for the rest of the month would you say that the first assassin's creed is the worst assassin's creed i don't know because i haven't played anything past three really yeah and i know like victory is really bad oh there's those yeah yeah i forgot forgot about those. we didn't like black flag yeah but i went this is worse yeah i mean i liked this game yeah me too but i know that it's worse (laughs) Um, it's rough. It's it's yeah. a it's a especially by today's standards. Mm-hmm. If you want to see this character and learn a lot about him, you should just play Assassin's Creed Revelations, and you should watch our backlog episode on Assassin's yes. Creed Revelations. Do we have more than one backlog episode on more than one Assassin's Creed? Or just one Assassin's Creed. I think just one Assassin's Creed. Okay, we got a lot of Assassin's. We Creed. do. We have all of them up to four. <laughs> there's like there's a lot of Assassin's Creed games. I know. There's over there's ten. Too many. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Dante's Inferno, uh, I've played that. It is literally just EA's God of War knockoff. Yeah, I played a little bit of it. Yeah. I wasn't a big fan. Yeah, no, it's... Marketing was crazy, though. Yes, the marketing, marketing was game. insane. And it actually is a gorgeous-looking game, but not a good one. Uh, so, Battlefield 1's good. Yeah. 
that might win out this whole thing, except for Nintendo. Oh boy! Because now that we have Switch Online, we get free Nintendo games. Yes, you know? and they just give them to you. You don't have to do any downloading as long as you have the Nintendo the Nintendo Entertainment System Switch Online app. November, so Thursday, November first, immediately yes. mm -hmm. you will get Metroid. Will nice. You also get Mighty Bomb Jack and Twin B. <laughs> Those don't matter. Metroid's awesome. Yeah, I've been very waiting happy. For, we're I've been waiting Metroid. for Metroid. Uh, and then they already have December's, which is going to be Wario's Woods uh, Ninja Gaiden, which I'm most excited for. Yeah. And Low Low <laughs> Adventures of Low Low. Uh, Metroid's going to be good. Yeah, I'm happy we're getting that. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's the I'm most excited for that out of everything we're getting for free in November. Yeah. But uh, I recommend Jackbox Party Pack Two. Definitely mm -hmm. download that. You never know when you're going to need that. Mm -hmm. People could play on their phones. It's a good yeah. thing to have. Uh, Bullet Storms kind of you know, dip in there. Yeah. Uh, Battlef Battlefield 1, another like dip in. Yeah. And Metroid, of course. Uh, I would just say maybe if you're into like weird stuff, Yakuza, because. Oh, yeah. For everybody, like Yakuza. that's got a huge fan base and it's always super weird. So, like you can beat people up with bicycles. Yes. <laughs> um. All right. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Yes. Uh, what do we talk about first? Will we, do we talk about Nintendo's financials or do we talk about the PlayStation Classic full game list? Um, we kind of do all over the place today. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? The... Uh, it depends on what I'm going to name this stream, Will. Okay. Should I name it PlayStation so-and-so or should I name it Nintendo Financial Report? I would, I would say probably PlayStation Classics because there's nothing less exciting than the words financial report but people like our nintendo content right. and there's gonna be a nintendo direct tomorrow that's so true. when this stream goes up people might be searching for nintendo Maybe. stuff hmm. i'm probably gonna put both in the title let's be real. yeah so it doesn't really matter everything's pointless we're all gonna die true i am making the executive decision we'll talk about nintendo's financial all report. right uh I tried to put this together as, as nicely as possible, but it looks like we're just going to read a bunch of articles that talk about Nintendo's financial report. According okay. to this, well, Nintendo is going to focus on DLC for big titles, online and offline events for fans. Ooh. This is according to Silicon Era. Nintendo releases financial briefings for the second quarter for fiscal year ending March 2019 and... I, I need to I need to open this on my laptop and not on the computer because it's freaking out right now. So sorry. So sorry to do this to you. Uh, so for President Sh Shuntoro Furukawa about plans for uh, encouraging long-term play. At the financial results briefing in April, then-President Kimishima noted how important it was for Nintendo in its second year to continue to provide consumers who purchased the hardware with reasons to stay interested in playing on the system. Here, let me introduce several initiatives that the company has undertaken to this end. Is, it, is this f uh, from Furukawa? Yeah, this is. I guess this is a quote from Furukawa. Okay. Um, one initiative involves the continual updating and delivery of add-on content for games this is something nintendo is not really known for no uh for example titles like mario kart 8 deluxe and splatoon 2 that were released last year have given more updates since april of this year with additions to games game elements and titles like kirby star allies and mario tennis aces that were just released this year have been updated for free they show a slide that has Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion, mm -hmm. uh, Kirby Star Allies, Mario Tennis Aces, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I think something that's interesting mm -hmm. about the games that they're showing is all of them, aside from Super Mario Odyssey, are the top uh, in the top five games that have been sold for the Switch. Yes. Aside from Mario Odyssey. Right. Which kind of needs some DLC. Yeah. Um, so that's why they're like, everybody has these games already. Mm -hmm. Let's shove some DLC down their throat and try to make some money off it. 
Alongside these additions of content, we have held recurring limited time in-game online events for individual titles. For titles like the ones shown here, the final user rankings from the events are shown on the official website. So they're showing Splatoon. They do the, uh, what are they called? What do they call this thing? Uh, um, Splatfest. Splatfest. How could I forget that name? Mm -hmm. They do those all the time. You got Maritans Aces. I don't remember any events for Maritans Aces, but I guess they did. Encouraging long-term play with Nintendo Switch. The Splatoon 2 World Championship and Smash Bros. Ultimate Exhibition matches held in June of this year at E3 are just two examples of the variety of online, non-online events we have also been holding. All right, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we are planning all kinds of events going forward in the Japanese market. Nintendo Live 2018 is set to take place in November and will feature tournaments for Splatoon 2, Mario Tennis Aces, and ARMS, as well as a tournament for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate ahead of its release. Oh, before it releases. Interesting. And we're not just planning competitions. We're also planning events such as demos for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, which was just in Topikachu. Topika! And Pokemon Let's Go Eevee as part of our wholehearted effort to prepare events that a wide array of contributors can enjoy. So, so they're planning a lot. They're planning they're a planning lot. Planning a lot of game content and IRL content. Expect more DLC, mm -hmm. especially for their top games. Yes. And I'm surprised they didn't talk about DLC for Super Smash Brothers. Unless, no, Smash definitely has to get DLC. Well, I'm not saying, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not expecting them. They're probably them. not talking about it because it's not out yet. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not expecting them to say, hey, this is the DLC we have. Yeah. I was expecting them to be like, this is going to be one of our biggest games on the platform. Yeah. And we're going to make even more money because mm -hmm. we're going to have DLC for it. And we, right. that's going to be probably their biggest DLC moneymaker, I think. Oh, yeah. Because people expect it. Yeah. Something so like Zelda... People might not expect there to be DLC. You know, you yeah. buy a, a game for your kid. You know, you don't expect yeah there to be more after they that. They set the precedent already with uh, Smash for Wii U. That got DLC. Correct, yeah. So expect more characters. That was the first Nintendo game to have paid DLC, I believe. One of, yeah. Uh, I think Mario Kart 8 had DLC, but I don't think it was paid. I thought some of it was. Maybe. Mario Kart 8 and... and uh, Smash Brothers were the first games with DLC. I don't remember which one was first yeah. though. Well, while you look that up, mm -hmm. uh, I want to look. I want to look at this Nintendo Life article. It says new data from Nintendo shows the true selling power of Switch's evergreen titles. Uh, I also want to look at the chat here. Uh, Lizdrin said, Bo "Guys, Bob didn't say hello to us at the beginning of the stream. I did. Yeah. Oh no, doing? I didn't." Hello, Lizdrin. <laughs> uh, so according to Nintendo Live, joining the many juicy nuggets of information, I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> Revealed by the recent financial briefing, Nintendo has sh shared graphical sales representations of the Switch's evergreen titles, showing just how strong and important these titles, these sales are to the company. The first chart shows the com combined sell through for Splatoon 2, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That's what I forgot. Legend of Zelda. So when I said those were the top five before best-selling games, I didn't include... So that okay. was the top six, okay. if you're including Zelda. Um, let me bring this up on the computer so everybody can see, can visually see the chart. little pregnant pause there all right first chart shows the combined sales from all those games i said before these four titles top the list of the best-selling games seen on the console so far as and as you can see from the chart their sales have maintained an amazingly solid level of consistency over the past few months elsewhere a second chart has been released well let me describe the chart it just says april 2018 and it just has splatoon 2 zelda Mario Odyssey, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And yeah, they've maintained their share. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is, the, I think, the best-selling game on the system, which is crazy because yeah. it's not even a new game. Uh, 
Elsewhere, a second chart has been released, uh, which compares the console attach rate for the same for evergreen titles. The two different sections show the attach rate, how many copies of the game have been purchased in relation to the number of consoles sold. At different points of the year, firstly in January 2018 and then in September, as you can see, despite shifting another 6 million consoles between those two dates, there was, there was no significant change in the attach rate, suggesting that these games are selling at a similar pace to the console itself. So that means it doesn't matter that these games came out like Mario Odyssey is a year old. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It's selling exactly the same <laughs> amount every month over month. Jeez. Um, I think I lied. I think Mario Odyssey... Oh, no. Mario Odyssey and Mario Kart 8 are neck and neck. That makes sense. Mario always had a bigger reach than Zelda did. I know, but I was think I was like, wait, isn't Mario Kart... Isn't Mario Odyssey the top-selling game on the Switch? That's why I'm pulling up this yeah. other article. Uh... Yeah, Super Mario Odyssey is the best-selling game on the Switch. Okay. I think what this first chart is showing is that is that Mario Odyssey sold more last year. Okay. Like when it first launched, yeah. it probably had a really big launch. Yeah. But month over month, it looks like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is kind of catching up or, or staying neck and neck with it. So the best-selling games are Super Mario Odyssey, Mar Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Splatoon 2, 1-2 Switch. That makes sense. It's one of those like we play games. So what I said before about the top six, I'm, I have no idea what I'm talking <laughs> about. Uh, Mario Tennis Aces, Arms, Kirby Star Allies, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, Xenoblade Chronicles Two. There you go. Xenoblade Chronicles, I'm a little surprised about. Yeah. Uh, not only is this information particularly interesting, but it's also a real eye opener. Major first-party Nintendo titles hardly ever see a reduction in price at retail, with games in franchises such as Super Mario and Pokemon often staying at full prices uh, years after release. And it can often be confusing when many other titles benefit from sales and discounts. The answer to that conundrum is obvious, though. Why would Nintendo discount its games when they continue to sell at full price for years on end? It's true. Uh, even today, almost seven years after release, Mario Kart 7 often finds itself sitting in the top 40 charts each week. And it was just revealed that the 10-year-old Mario Kart Wii shifted another 40,000 copies wow. in the last quarter. Wow. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That people are buying Wii games. Where? I know, right? <laughs> Where are you finding that? Yeah. Probably at like a 7-Eleven. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to note, I don't know if I have this as a story, but... uh. Um, Fortnite. Half of Switch users have downloaded Fortnite. I believe it. Are you one of them? Yeah. Downloaded it. Haven't played it yet. <laughs> Did you look up when the DLC came out for Mario Kart? Yeah. Uh, so Mario Kart 8, uh, fr uh, first free DLC came out in August of 2014. And then... Announced in August of 2014, uh, Nintendo announced two purchasable DLC packs, purchasable for money, with money. And then Smash Brothers, the first DLC, first paid DLC, was available in April 2015. So after, after, so the first paid DLC that Nintendo had, yeah, it was Mario Kart 8. It was released in November of 2014. Unless there was some weird stuff that Nintendo, uh, like yeah. a game nobody knows about. You know, there's probably mm -hmm. something like that laying around. But yeah, as far as major title, Mario Kart 8 was the first. And I remember yeah. that happening and I was like, whoa, Nintendo, really? You're going to yeah. do this to us? It was confusing because they, they did release a free set. They released like the Mercedes Benz like cars. Yeah. <laughs> Are those in Deluxe? I think so. Um,. Let me move some stuff around in my in my notes here. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> While we're at it, Nintendo Switch hits 22.86 million worldwide sales. Has now outsold the GameCube, which I might add is not something to rave about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the GameCube, while an awesome console. Yes. And that many of people's favorite system is it did not sell well correct and i think that's important because the wii u 
was not an awesome system. Had great games, mm-hmm. not an awesome system, also didn't sell well. And a lot yeah. of people compare the GameCube to the Wii U. I don't think it's a fair comparison. Yeah, no, it's not. They're, they can be compared because they're both commercial failures. Yes. But the GameCube is an actual good console. Yeah. And the Wii U is was was not. Mm-hmm. But it had good games. Yes. I don't know if it's part of the comments that we're going to read, but uh, somebody last week was very mad. Oh, no, it might have been my Twitter. I don't know, but he was very mad that I said that nobody wants a Sega Saturn, like, remade. Yeah, that was, I think I told you, like, a lot of people are <laughs> Somebody was into this really yeah. mad. I was like, then I, I, again, looked up the games, and I was like, there's, like, maybe, like, three games. There's not a lot, <laughs> but, like, the ones that are there, like, Saturn fans are hardcore. Imagine having to gather together 20 games to put in a classic collection for a Sega Saturn. I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can name 20 games. All right. Nintendo Switch is now at 22.86 million worldwide. Nintendo has released its latest batch of financial data revealing that Nintendo Switch sold blah, 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 a whole bunch of stuff. This number, oh, that's a, as of September 30th. This number means that the Switch has now outsold the GameCube, which which shifted 21.74 in its lifetime. I think it's safe to say that the Switch is pretty successful. Yeah, I think everybody's saying that. <laughs> the data reveals that the Switch sold 3.19 million units in the last quarter, meaning that the console has now shifted 5.07 million units so far this financial year. With just two quarters to go, the holiday season, and the usually quiet quarter just after, this means that Nintendo needs sales to increase to a rather staggering rate to reach the yearly target of 20 million sales, a target which is very much still in place, which I think is interesting because they're going back and forth on whether or not they think they can hit that. But, I mean, it's supposed to be a, a, a tough target to hit. Yeah. But let's not forget, we got Pokemon. Smash. And Smash. And I don't know if I have this in the in the notes, but it was also revealed that uh, half of this of the pre-orders for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are on the bundle with the Pokemon Pokeball Plus. Oh, so half of the people who pre-ordered Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee yeah. got the twice as expensive bundle with the with the Pokeball in it. Interesting. So that's going to be a lot of money for Nintendo. Yeah. But will that be new Switch owners? Because that's what we need if we're gonna yeah. if they're gonna be hitting twenty million sales, they're gonna need some new Switch owners. Mm-hmm. The new Switch owners, I think, are, are gonna come. I mean, they're gonna come with Pokemon, yeah. But they're definitely gonna come for Smash. That's gonna be a system seller. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're both gonna be system sellers, but people like our age, yeah, they're gonna come out of the woodwork for Smash. Kids are gonna come out of the woodwork for for Pokemon. Right. Adults are gonna come out of the woodwork for Smash. For the sake of comparison, 7.23 million Switch consoles were sold during last year's holiday period, meaning that this year's sales would have to be much higher than those seen just 12 months ago. That's scary. Yeah. While this might sound like a near impossible task, it's worth noting that Switch sales are actually slightly up year on year despite a relative lack of first party major releases over the last few months. And the upcoming Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate will no doubt be seen as potential system sellers. Uh, Okay. I think systems pick up after launch. Because then the it, hype go, gets, and then there's there's more it games. Like it goes through waves. Like I think um, the PS4, like there was a dip in sales, but then like it it ramped up a little bit recently. Um, Xbox One is always going through waves, you know. Well, it peaks in the middle. Yeah, you know. Uh, I we got, we got a while till that middle part hits, you know, yeah. for the Switch because it just came out last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think early adopters are waiting for more games because there's barely any games. Um, parents are waiting for more games for their kids. Yeah. Um, and I think this is the year because we're going to Pokemon freaking Smash Brothers. Yeah. So, and then you get Pokemon. You you buy the Switch for your kid. You give him Pokemon. And then, like, I want more. And then you buy him freaking. You, you got uh, Mario, Mario and, and Zelda, Zelda, like, in, in, the, in the bank. Yeah. Not a bad option. Yeah. Uh, K White Pearl says Switch bundle. Yes. Yeah, there's going to be a bundle for both, yeah. for both games. AJ says, still outpacing PS4 with less holiday seasons. That's crazy. That is crazy. Was the PS4 at like 80-something million? I have no idea. It's a lot. 
Nick Molner says, I saw a Fortnite labeled Switch system and thought that was interesting. Yeah, because Fortnite's free. Yeah. But don't you get like exclusive stuff or like extra f- like money or whatever? Yeah, you get some V Bucks, Will. Yeah, V Bucks. Yeah, man. That's what I said. V Bucks, because I'm happy. <laughs> I think Fortnite's the only game to be bundled with every current system. Wow. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure there's a PS4 bundle and an Xbox One bundle. Somebody needs to take down Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Crash Bandicoot asks, can you have two saves for Zelda Breath of the Wild? No. No? Oh, yeah, that was a thing when it came out. Yeah, Everybody you would like have pissed. to create another profile in order to have a new save. Max, <laughs> Max, what the hell is your name? Max <laughs> Said, it has very something very important in the chat, Will. What? He says, Bob, did you know that Super Mario Bros. 2 was originally a game <laughs> called Doki Doki Panic in Japan? <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? I thought it was always a um, um, Mario. Oh, man. That's some crazy information. Thank you for being a gamer. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I can handle this anymore. <laughs> uh, good times. Uh, are we done with this? Yeah, chart? I think yeah, we're, we're done, done with this chart. Yeah. No, oh, we're not we're done, done with the Nintendo financial report. We're done though. with the chart. Actually, we might be done with the Nintendo financial All right. report. Um, yeah, because what else do you have? The only other thing is that uh, Poke, uh, Pokemon Let's Go Prios ha- have half of them were for the Pokeball Plus yeah, edition. Which said that already. I'm going to delete that. We don't need to yeah. make that a topic. But well, the Switch eShop preload listing for Pokemon reveals the file size. Oh boy, what's the file size? I have to go to the article first. <laughs> uh, is it 4.1 gigabytes? Oh, yes. You, you mean it's not 200 like Red Dead Redemption I was? Know. Jesus Christ, Will. Yeah. It took two hours to uh, install. Oh, two? Yeah. It took me five. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I downloaded it, the whole game. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, and my PS4 is in my basement, which isn't next to my router. So. It was actually quicker on my launch PS4. Really? Yep. Huh. I don't know why. It wasn't too bad because, like, I also had, like, YouTube going. So I was watching stuff and downloading at the same time. Mm. It still took five hours. But I got worked on around the house because I'm a homeowner and I do boring shit like that. Oh, of course. You got you to you gloat. I do. You need to tap, pat yourself on the back. How's that new bookshelf you built for yourself going? Good, actually. <laughs> I got to get more things to put you know, my comics in. I like how you say it in the very beginning of your video. Like, oh, yeah. This is my new bookshelf. <laughs> and that looks exactly the same as your old bookshelf. Well, because I said in another video, like, I, was, I need to get new bookshelves. And they're, done, okay. they're not the same. It's wider. All so right. I can fit all of my graphic novels you on it. You have a lot. I do. I have too many. Yes, both versions of the game can now be found on the eShop at the time of writing. Most regions can't access the preload function just yet, giving us a chance to take a good look at the specific at the game specific. This article could just be one number and nothing else. The game will support Japanese, English, Spanish, French, German, Italian, Korean, and Chinese languages. Chinese isn't a language, isn't it? Mandarin, Dutch, Mandarin, Mandarin and Cantonese are the two languages. I think Mandarin is the dominant language, so it might, they might just be Mandarin. Support one to two players, which we already knew. Thanks, Nintendo Life. <laughs> Why do I go to them? And all f- important file size stands at will a whopping 4.1 gigabytes. I think that's the amount of data for just Arthur Morgan in Red Dead. <laughs> just to him and all of his guns. Yeah. Thankfully, 4.1 gigabytes shouldn't be enough to cause too much of a... Okay. Super Mario Odyssey, fun little fact, Will, according to Nintendo Life, 5.5 gigabytes. Legend of Zelda, 14.3 gigabytes, which is huge. Sonic Mania, 193 megabytes. Yeah, it could fit like on a yeah. Genesis. Uh, or a Saturn. Saturn, yeah. Uh, Nintendo's really good at compression. They are. Really good. So, I'm not surprised. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean this is going to be a small game. There's going to be a whole yeah. lot to do in this game. They just, Nintendo knows how to make the most out of small size. Yes. All right, Will. What's this here I hear talk about? Uh, the PlayStation Classic games? Well, Bob, Sony revealed all 20 PlayStation Classic games. 
that are going to be on their PlayStation Classic mini console coming out this year for 99 US dollars. Which I'm going to buy for some reason. <laughs> Can't you're tell you stupid, why. Probably, but. <laughs> Can't tell you why I want it. All right, so we now have the full list. We talked about this previously. We did. And well, we, we, we came to the conclusion that it's a little stupid. A little bit. So it's, it's a little weird. But the, the list of games makes it even more stupid if you ask me. I don't me. know why I think this is weird and why I w- wouldn't think that an N64 classic is weird. Yeah. Part of it, because we said, like, up polygons is stupid. Yeah. It doesn't look as good as up like... S- SNES games and stuff, you know? Yeah. Like like flat pixel graphics, up res look nice. This stuff up res doesn't look nice. Up it, it's it's all gotta be up res properly. Mm. That's the thing. Cause you can up res N64 era games and PS1 era games and they'll look okay. They'll look good even. Um but you know if you do it wrong, you screw it up completely. Um but yeah, so we'll just run through the list, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Battle Arena Toshinden. Yeah, what the hell is that? That's like a cult <laughs> classic thing, I think. I know someone's in the chat is going to be like, no, it's not a cult classic. It's one of the best and more important games on the system. But it's a cult classic. Um, That's on the screen right now. Cool Borders 2. Yay! <laughs> Destruction Derby. Okay. Which is literally just Demolition Derby. I've, I've played that. Uh, Final Fantasy 7. Makes sense. The original Grand Theft Auto. I'm a big fan of Grand Theft Auto 2. Yeah. Which is a top down. I never played the first one. I, don't I feel think like it's good. Really? I the just, second one's good. I I honestly don't think the first Grand Theft Auto like is well regarded at all. I honestly think it's on this list because it's Grand Theft Auto. People are gonna just see the name and that's it. Maybe they should have put two. Yeah. Because two is good. I liked two a lot. Yeah. Well, we'll, I played it on PC way later. We'll get it to good. it when we're done with uh, f- going through the list. Uh, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Metal Gear Solid, the original. Now, that's the whole reason I'm buying this. Just that. I The second clip in like the trailer, mm-hmm. it's like flashing through things. I saw Cyborg Ninja. I'm like, buying it. <laughs> this is it. I'm getting this. All right. <laughs> uh, Mr. Driller. I don't know what the hell that is. I've heard it. I feel like I know what it is, but I think I might be confusing with Drill Dozer. Okay. I could understand why. Yeah. Uh, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, the original Oddworld game. That makes sense. Yes. Perfect sense. Yes. Except that game's been re released like yeah, a we'll, thousand times. We'll get to that at the end. The original Rayman. Yes. Uh, Fine. Resident Evil, the director's cut. Yes. Which is interesting. Um, Revelations Persona, which is the first Persona game. Okay, that's understandable. Uh, Ridge Racer Type 4, which I get. Fine. Uh, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, which I don't understand. Why? Um, Siphon Filter, which I understand. I kind of understand. But, like, this is one that they could have left out. Well, here's the thing. Like, Siphon Filter, that was, like, one of their big franchises on the PS1. There was, like, four of them. Yeah. So... You know that when people think of the original PlayStation, Siphon Filter is going to be one of those games. That I they don't. Expect. It is not for me. Not, not for you. Yeah, it's not like the immediate but, connections. There. Yeah, but that's you. We didn't grow up with an original PlayStation. Right, right, for right. those who did, I mean, I always saw Siphon Filter. It's yeah. a big franchise. Yeah, but I was always, you know, it's just like you know, it's a thing. Yeah. Like Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tekken Three, which makes sense. Uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. This is really cool that it's on there, because I love Rainbow yeah. Six. The first one's rough. The original PlayStation version is the worst version of it. It's really weird that it's on here. Yeah, it, that this is bizarre. Yeah, uh, but I like it. I mean, yeah. I, I like the. But like the N sixty four version is like a lot better. We played the N sixty four. Yeah, that's but, why I like it. I don't know if I've ever played the PlayStation. It's not. Version. It's not good. It's like doesn't run as well. So that's a problem. Yeah. So we got twist, and then finally twisted metal. And Wild Arms. Those two, okay, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. So you got you got a list of 20 games. So some noticeable exclusions. A lot of noticeable exclusions. Akuhime in the chat says, uh, 
Akuhime, I'm so sorry. I'm mm-hmm. trying really hard to pronounce his name correctly. Uh, where is Spyro? There's no Spyro the Dragon, none of them. There's no no Crash Bandicoot games. Uh, Parappa the Rappa isn't on there. I didn't consider that. Yeah. That's probably the biggest deal. That's one of, yeah. Uh, a lot of people wanted one of the Tony Hawk games, specifically Tony Hawk 2. That's not on there. Uh, Tony Hawk, one of the Tony Hawk games should have definitely been on there. Well, that's act. Well, a lot of these are Activision, actually. A lot of these are third party, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gran Turismo is not on here. That's, that's like, weird. Yeah, that's like their best-selling game on Why the Why would you PlayStation. put Ridge Racer and not Gran Turismo? Yeah. Uh, people are like, uh, so you have the Resident Evil Director's Cup, but not Resident Evil 2, the better game. Yeah, why Why is? Why do you think it's weird that it's the Director's Cut? Well, the Director's Cut, I think, uh, changed a lot of cutscenes and added the analog stick movement. But it doesn't matter, because there's no analog stick. You're getting the original... Places yeah, I don't even think Rainbow Six has analog stick controls. Yeah. Which is going to be rough. Yeah. Um, Castlevania Symphony of the Night is not on here. Tenchu Stealth Assassin is not on here. Ridge Racer was developed by Namco. Yes. Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics is not on here. That's a very popular game. Uh, Final Fantasy VII is, though, right? Final Fantasy VII is, but not Tactics. That's right, their, right, right, right. like, I don't remember you strategy. Game. Seven. Um, the original t- Tomb Raider is not on here. Espionage Area 51 was just saying Tomb Raider. Yeah. Uh, Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver, uh, Parasite Eve, Ape Escape. Ape Escape requires dual shock, so I understand. Yeah. But the point is, there are a lot more games that are synonymous with the PlayStation 1 that should have been on here but aren't. It feels like they were getting games that they could afford. To either a, they were getting games that they can afford to put on here on this thing, keep it like a ninety nine dollars, or b, they were they felt like oh, some of these games have remasters, some of them are available on PSN, so we don't need to put those games on well, here. Well, why would they put Final Fantasy seven? You can get that everywhere. Exactly. So it just doesn't seem like this was thought through and curated very well. Right. Unless you're able to update it. I don't think you are, though. I don't, I don't think there's any like Wi-Fi connection or SD card slot or anything. Right, 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 right. Um, but when, that's like the number one thing people critiqued on the NES Classic or the SNES Classic. Yeah. Is, I wish I could put my own games on here. Right. But, you know... Those two didn't need it because those games were better curated. Right. So you're buying that thing for the for the games. Well, yeah. you're buying it for the novelty, but yeah, uh, the game. I'm buying this thing for the novelty. Let's yeah. be real here. But I mean, but if you look the at games the, are the, the games point. on the NES Classic and the SNES Classic, that was a good collection of games that represent what that system was. You know, when I think of the original PlayStation, I don't think of you know <clears throat> Intelligent Cube or what was some of the other one? Jumpin' Flash. I don't even think of the original Rayman. Right. So I did. I did throw this in a late into the keep, but um, the Japanese listing of games is different completely. Oh, it's Forbes, your favorite website. I'm sorry. I love Forbes. I'm glad I opened this on my computer. Yeah. Um, but you got games like Armored Core, G Darius, oh. uh, Parasite Eve, which is a huge one. That was like one of the Square Enix, um, Square Soft games, like right around Final Fantasy VII. That was like, you know, as big as Final Fantasy VII was. Um, Gradius the, Gaiden. Yeah, Saga Frontier. Still, still a weird list. It's the, yeah, no, it's still a weird Tekken list. Tekken three. Yeah, no, Tekken three is on both. Why three though? I, I don't know. That's was yeah, the that's, first that, Tekken on there. Yeah, yeah, right. The first, yeah, the first three. That's what. That's the thing, though. So, like, this list doesn't isn't like on the SNES and uh, NES Classic. Mm-hmm. They would always put the first game, yeah, on there, and, and then if the second one was like better, they would include the second one also. Yeah. You know, I think the only exception for, is Mega for, Man for classics' sake. Yeah, why? What it was? I think Mega, Mega Man Two is on the NES Classic, but not Mega Man One. Really? I'm gonna but I think that makes sense because who the hell cares about Mega Man 1? Mega Man 1 is not a good game. No. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Mega Man 2. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> the problem with Mega Man 1 is that, first of all, there's only like four Robot Masters. Yeah. And second of all, the <laughs> it's Dark Souls hard where yeah. things just come at you or like you're supposed to, rem- you die and then you learn and then you remember the level. Yeah. Uh, these other, the other ones have less of that. Yeah. Meanwhile, Sonic the Hedgehog is a bad game. It's all trial and error gameplay. I don't, uh, what did you just say? <laughs> People, Sonic is not like that. People the, keep saying Sonic's like that. It is not like no, that. No, it's not. It's, it is pure uh, f- reflex-based. Yeah. Yeah, it's based on your reflexes. I was making jokes. People always say that Sonic is trial and error gameplay. Meanwhile, Mega Man is the definition of trial yes. and error gameplay. All of them. I can agree. I'm not talking when I talk about Sonic. I don't talk about the first one, right? I'm pretty sure the first one doesn't have that either, though. Trial it doesn't. The play. first one, you, you know, can take honest, all of them slow. You don't have to go fast. Yeah. Even though he tells you you gotta go fast. Yeah. The game's it looks like it's based around speed, but it's really not. Yeah. It's just a platformer. Mm-hmm. Take it, play it like a Mario game. You're gonna have a fine time with yeah. Sonic. Not trial and error. Mega Man, trial and error. But back to the PlayStation Classic. Yeah, it's it's a weird list. I don't like the list. I think they could have done a much better job. And I think I agree. they're holding a lot off because you can get them elsewhere. Disappointed. Yes. Except that I'm getting Metal Gear. Right. Even though we have it, the original version. Yeah. But you don't have a way to play. Oh, no, you got to hook up the PS2. Um, I took the PS3. <laughs> <laughs> that's a hard game to get right yeah the, the original Metal Gear I found it at Long Island Retro Gaming for $10 no I mean like outside of the original PlayStation like to play it you can no you can download it on PS3 oh and I think you can get it on Vita too never mind yeah I thought it was there was some like weird thing about getting it no is it in the it's not in the collection right no but they did release a uh a collection with it and it's a download code mm-hmm. i wouldn't mind playing uh metal gear solid three again yeah i've been meaning to do that i think twin snakes still is the better metal gear game i do love uh, twin, snakes. twin snakes better than the original a lot of people think the original is better well a lot of people just don't like you know the new cutscenes or the fact that they added first person aiming which those people need to get over themselves uh we got Two super chats. Let's okay. go back. Uh, the first one is for you. LKM Cherokee. Hey, Will. What are your thoughts on Justice League, Aquaman, Drowned Earth number one? Also, are there any Red Dead Redemption comics? Oh. Um, so I did. The Jonah Hex New 52, I'm so sorry, no, is, is good. Yes. Um, I remember that. That's good. Also, that same team, uh, Jimmy, Pal- Jimmy Palmiotti and Justin Gray. Did a run of Jonah Hex comics before the New 52, which is also very good. So I recommend that. Um, there's no like specifically Red Dead Redemption branded comics. Um, but definitely check out the Jonah Hex stuff. Even not... Done, definitely the Jonah Hex by Jimmy Palmiotti and Justin Gray. But even like stuff not by them is worth it. Um, as for Justice League, Aquaman Drowned Earth 1, I read it. I liked it. I have issues with it because it felt like it was going way too fast and way too slow at the same time. There's a lot happening like on the pages like it, and it feels like it's moving quickly, but every page is just filled with dialogue explaining what's going on. That's very 90s. Yeah. And it's just that. like every page is like, you know, this is happening, blah, 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 but the artwork just like makes it seem like it's going faster than it is. So... I hope that's just this issue and not every other issue that this happens in. Uh, Because it's a really interesting concept. Basically, the Earth is covered in water. And if you touch the water, you turn into a fish monster. And only the Justice League can save you. Because, of course. (laughs) Okay. Uh, The other Super Chat, $5 from John Enquist. Mm -hmm. Hey, sorry I'm late. Sonic is a weak franchise. And what about the GameStop bundle trade-in deal that I missed? You can take your money back for saying Sonic is a weak franchise. We don't want it. Um. Thank you for the late fee, though. Yeah. Uh. What What about the GameStop bundle trade in deal? That are I you missed? referring to the weird trade in your Switch to get a Switch bundle? Do you hear about that? No. Explain. GameStop's it doing. It's hard to explain. GameStop is basically offering you two hundred dollars to trade in your Switch 
towards one of the newer like Diablo bundle or it's meant to like trade in for the Diablo bundle, the Switch or the Pokemon bundle for Switch. So you can get like the the fancy Switch. That's kind of really cool. It is, but like How you know, much more do you pay? I think like a hundred bucks. I kind of really like this deal. <laughs> it just, it feels But you can't move all of your saves. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I, I don't feel like it's worth it. It's, it was a very weird thing. I need to know more about this. But as for John Enquist, thank you for your $5. Also, fuck you. Nintendo <laughs> <laughs> uh, Switch console. No, what? Facebook. Yeah, it's a video. This is the worst f- way to give me this information. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is from Nintendo. Been holding off on getting a Nintendo Switch. There's never a better time to upgrade with this GameStop deal. Receive up to $275 in store credit when you trade in. Select systems towards your. Oh, that doesn't. I want to know how much I get for my Switch. GameStop will give you $200 towards a Nintendo Switch when you trade in a Switch. That's what it is. They'll give you up to $200. Okay. GameStop. Uh, Blah, blah, blah. So that so you're losing a hundred dollars. Yeah, you're. Yeah, and so then you, these bundles are like four hundred. Yeah, the Pokemon one is at least. So, eh, forget it. Not worth yeah. it. Yeah, don't do it. It's stupid. Just get better Joy Cons for your Switch. Yeah. Uh. AJ says you can transfer one Switch's contents to another. Just oh, that's what you could do. And I bet you the GameStop you go to will let you do it in the store because I would have if I were. Yeah. There. But still, not worth it. <laughs> yeah, not worth it. If you have both switches, you can transfer everything over. Yeah. But if you don't, then you can't transfer your saves. Mark Murphy says, cloud saves. Not every game sports in it. Yeah, for some reason. Moving on here. Yeah, what's next? Uh, I put this in the keep. I don't know if this is news. Sega Mega Drive Classic hits Switch on the 6th of December because this is freaking a European website. Physical and digital versions on the way. Did we talk about all these games? Uh, I don't think we talked about all these games. We talked about how uh, Sega Genesis Classics or Sega Mega Drive Classics, if you're not in America, um, is coming. So it's it's a game for the Switch mm-hmm. that has a collection of Sega Genesis games. Yes. So it's like their version of the, a Classics collection. But they're also doing a classic console? <laughs> well, let's back up. <laughs> Sega, like... Did, they just like fart out their classic games all willy nilly, and which gets, is fine. Yeah, but it gets confusing, like trying to keep up with everything. Also, too, the Sega Genesis collection. What we got, what we're getting on the Switch is the same thing we got on PS4 and Xbox One, and those that collection is technically comprised of different collections that were released on Steam. Oh, yeah. Explain. So, like, they did Sega Genesis Collection 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever. And then this, it's the same thing because it's still got, you know, the the bedroom aesthetic. You pull the games off the shelf and you put them in the system. And it's got all, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff and artwork and whatnot. But it's not all of those games. It's a selection of those games. You follow me? Yeah, I'm trying to find a list of the games. Yeah, yeah like, I can't. If you go to the Wikipedia, it's going to give you like all the different collections. Also, they've they've had like Sega Genesis classics since the PS2. <laughs> right. So, it's hard to keep track. Also, classic stuff is getting more and more popular. Also, and this is the last thing I'll say on this. This is different from the Sega Ages stuff they've been doing. Where like they re-release Sonic One with new content, Fantasy Star with new content. Right. This is separate from that. Right. My stomach is making that noises. That was so loud. <laughs> I hope that got picked up on the mic. I'm playing the trailer on the okay. screen right now. Um, the trailer's. Co- I remember this trailer. Yeah. But, but this was just uploaded. All right. Wait. Hold. On. Let me. Let, I'm gonna read out all the games that it shows on the screen. All right. Well, I have the list. Oh, okay. It was Never literally mind. just you click one of the links there. Oh, okay. All right, just read through Is them all. Is it 50 games? It's Yeah, it's a lot. Just give me the good ones. Well, why don't I just read the ones that are here on the, in this? All right. Uh, let me go back. Streets of Rage 2, Revenge of Shinobi, 
uh, which is not the good one. No, that is a good one. Do you want to just read through the list? <laughs> Alice Kidd in the Enchanted <laughs> Castle, Alien Soldier, Alien Storm, Altered Beast, Beyond Oasis, Biohazard Battle, Bonanza Brothers, Columns, Columns 3. Um, <laughs> Why not 2? Because screw 2. <laughs> Comic Zone, Crackdown, Decap Attack, Dr. Robotics, Mean Bean Machine, Dynamite Heady, uh, Eswat, City Under Siege, Fatal Labyrinth, uh, Flicky, Gain Ground, Galaxy Force 2, Golden Axe 1, 2, and 3, Gunstar Heroes, Kid Chameleon, Landstalker, uh, Light Crusader, Fantasy Star 2, 3, and 4, uh, Rystar, Shadow Dancer, The Secret of Shinobi, Shining Force 1 and 2, Shining in the Darkness, Shinobi 3, Return of the Ninja Master, uh, Sonic 3D Blast, Sonic Spinball, Sonic the Hedgehog 1, Sonic 2, Space Harrier 2, Streets of Rage 1, 2, and 3, uh, Super Thunderblade, Swords of Vermilion, The Revenge of Shinobi, Toe Jam and Earl Panic on Funkatron, The Original Turtle Jam and Earl, Vector Man 1 and 2, and Virtual Fighter 2. <gasps> I, I checked out like half Okay. <laughs> A uh, very important comment from William Wolf in the chat here. I wonder who that is. Oh, boy. says, uh, you call those Halloween costumes? Back in my day, my friend Dan once stripped naked, put on roller skates, and went as a pull toy. He's been telling us that <laughs> since we were the age where we shouldn't have known what a pull toy meant. I mean, I didn't get it. It's his penis. Yeah. Okay. John Enquist with $2 says, you guys are the best. Thanks, John. But still, screw you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Jordan says, heard Will's stomach. So yes. basically, every single Sega Genesis game is coming out on the Switch. Every one that you would want. Except Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Right. We're going to get that. Oh, we don't know, though, because that's another weird one. That that's doesn't a get very weird one, yeah. Doesn't get re-released very often. Yeah. The last time was on, like, a PS2 it's, thing. Here's where... All it, right. It, it, Here we go, said, guys. <laughs> remember how I said Sega Genesis Collection is, like, 100 different bundles on Steam? Yep. It's in one of those bundles. Mm-hmm. On Steam. On Steam. But not on console? But not on console. Any console. Any console. Interesting. I'm switching to water. Okay. That's what I'm doing. You can, you can get it on Xbox 360 and play it on Xbox One, but you got to download Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles separately. Dad said, see, joke got you $2. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what happened, but okay. Now we owe him $2. Oh, uh, great. He's going to hold this over our heads. Um... All right, so, I mean, are you going to buy this? No. Why not? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How much? Is there a price? Uh, I don't think it's expensive. It's probably like, you know, 30 bucks. It's a really good deal. It honestly is. Um, and honestly, there's no reason why I shouldn't get it. But then you have something like Sega Ages, which, like, they're enhancing the games. And they're probably better ports. Revenge of Shinobi is not the good one. Revenge of Shinobi is the popular one. Shinobi 3 is the best one. Yes. You're thinking of Shinobi 3. I'm thinking of Sh I always get the two confused. Yeah, no. Revenge of Shinobi is Shinobi 2. I want the jet surfing ninja. That's Shinobi, that Shinobi 3, 3. That's included in this bundle. All right. That might be worth it for me. Okay. Because <laughs> I love that game. Mm -hmm. Definitely one of the best games on the Genesis. Mm -hmm. Uh... Was that in Sega Ages? It came for the phone. Or was that Revenge? I have one on my phone right that's, now. That's, uh, well, see, that's different because the phone is Sega forever. <laughs> Revenge of Shinobi is on my phone right now. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. I played it on iPhone. It's not good. Okay. <laughs> uh, <sighs> so, and the Sega Ages games have some changes sometimes. Yeah, the Sega Ages games are enhanced... They have new features, um, like the spin dash in Sonic 1. I'm trying to see if I can get a list of the Switch. Yeah, so That so came out already, right? Yeah, Sonic 1, Thun I need to play Thunder that. Force 4, and the original Fantasy Star um, are all a part of Sega Ages. Alex Kidd in Miracle World, Game Ground, Space Harrier, Outrun, Columns 2, Thunder Force AC, Sonic 2, and Virtual Racing are all coming to Sega Ages. Did and I... Continue. Go ahead. Doesn't the Sonic for the phone have the spin dash also? Yes. Okay. I'm going to just play it on my phone. Okay. I think Sega Ages and Sega Forever on the phone, that initiative is to put every Sega game, you know, from all their consoles out on a platform. Whereas the Genesis Collection 
is just the Genesis collection. Eric Henley gave us $2 and said, give to your dad for creating you both. So now we got to give debt to Yeah, him. all right. <laughs> uh, Mark also says, and there is a rewind feature. For okay. the Sega Ages. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. All right. Too much classic games stuff happening yeah. right now. Yeah. Get rid of this old video games, daddy-o. I want to know about new games. You, you, you met your allotted daddy-o for the day? I did. Let's talk about how the guy who was doing stuff on Castlevania wants to do Zelda. Yeah, according to Business Insider, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, the Legend of Zelda TV series may be the next project from the producer of Netflix's Castlevania. Uh, Adi Shankar, who's popular. I don't, he's done other he, things. He's right? done a lot of stuff. He was the producer of uh, Dread. The Carl Urban Judge Dread movie. Uh, he produced the Castlevania games, the Castlevania uh, anime on Netflix. Uh, he did that Power Rangers fan film, like the gritty reboot of Power Rangers that blew up like a few years ago. Mm. That was him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he put up on Instagram uh, a note. I, I don't know why. <laughs> it bothers me when people do this. Yeah. It's the easiest way to put text on Instagram. It is. And Twitter. If you're doing like a big apology for your racist comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he wrote, I can confirm that I'm working with an iconic Japanese gaming company to adapt one of their iconic video game series into a, into a series. I don't I, That also bothers me that he worded it. Uh, iconic video game series into a series. Yeah. It's a video game series. He's going to make it into a series. Yeah. I know what he means. But he, didn't, he should have said. He didn't say it, right? Yeah. Uh, that, that's implying that a video game series doesn't count. Yeah. On November 16th at 1 p.m., I'm going to announce what it is. I love you all. Thank you for following me on this journey. Entertaining you guys continues to be a privilege. And then is there a comment? The success of Castlevania created this opportunity, he says. Uh, and people are just speculating that it's Legend Yeah, of Zelda. there's nothing in here that says it's Zelda. Uh, except that he previously said that he wanted to work on The Legend of Zelda. That's uh, really He it. did. Yeah. And, okay. and Nintendo has been wanting to put Zelda on... Netflix? There's been yeah, there was this goes a while back. Zelda was coming to Netflix, it didn't happen. So that's why everybody's drawing yeah. these things together. I think it's pretty plausible. Yeah. I think it's weird to I mean, Nintendo is an iconic Japanese gaming company. Right. But I wouldn't have said that, you know. Yeah. I mean, for all we know, it could be bonk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whatever it is, it's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, the Castlevania anime is really popular. A lot of people are calling it the best video game adaptation ever. Yeah, I gotta watch it. Yeah, me too. Um, good. Yeah, I'm happy. I hope, if it's Zelda, I hope the boy Zelda doesn't talk. Yeah. You know, the green one? Yeah, the green one. Yeah. yeah. I hope he doesn't talk. Mm -hmm. um, I hope mm -hmm. he says, excuse me, princess. And that's it. That's it. He just says that once. It's all he's, it's I hope he's it's made by the guys who made Sonic Boom. I hope it looks exactly like that new Mega Man cartoon that's on the air right now. <sighs> that that thing's rough. Yeah. I saw some clips. It's not, yeah. not good. Mm -mm. Bad times. Yeah. Uh, Brooks in the chat. Klonoa series confirmed. Yo, Klonoa is good. He's a Klonoa fan. Klonoa is good. good. What What about it? It's, it's the, just good. The game? It's just fun, yeah. The game's good? The game's good, yeah. Like, you forget about it because, like, you know, there's only two of them. And, like, they don't ever release them, but, like, they're good games. All right. I, got, I guess I got to play some yeah. Klonoa. What system was it for? Uh, I think the first one was on PS1 and then they remade it for the Wii and then the second one was on PS2. Would have been perfect for a classic edition, but... Uh, yeah. It. Speaking of Netflix... You know they're making a Witcher series and Henry Cavill is going to be in it? Are they? I had no idea. Uh, yeah, well, would you like to see our first look at Henry Cavill as the Witcher? Yes. Here it is. It's on screen now. Or I will play it right now. There he is. There's like no audio. Yeah, it's literally. And as you can see, or you can't see because if you're listening to this on an audio podcast, it is um, Henry Cavill. Walking up with, in a bad wig, drinking a potion, being the Witcher. <laughs> I think he looks good. 
He looks fine. I think I think it's it was a this is a stupid uh, first look. Yeah, they, they should have just done a picture. Yeah, I, I I think he looks good. He looks fine. The, I wig, feel, the wigs. I feel uh, like definitely he, a wig. I feel like he could have looked better though. Like he needs a beard or something. Yeah, a lot of people are saying he the uh, doesn't he have a beard? Pretty sure in the first game he didn't. My understanding the is these are this series is going to be based on the earlier books, which he, which in, he's younger. And the games apparently take place after the books. Ah, uh, okay. So, and he needs a scar. Yeah, but well, uh, again, he like, pro- I think he'll get it in yeah. the series. Why not? If this is supposed to be, you know, prequel, I'm trying to pull a picture. Yeah, he doesn't have a beard in The Witcher Two. Yeah, so that makes sense. But he's definitely a lot older in The Witcher mm-hmm. Two. A lot of people were also saying, please make the wig shorter. I think that's nitpicking. Yeah. Um, again, I think he looks good. I think it'll, yeah, I think he looks fine. I think once we see more of it, he'll it'll look even better. Shen says, that looks bad. He looks way too young and pretty. But according to Will, it's probably going to take place yeah. before the game. So Also, Henry Cavill is a pretty man. There's just no getting around it. True. Stepperot says Henry looks great. It's not Witcher Three, uh, Ger- Geralt. It's a uh, much younger Geralt. I'm definitely saying that wrong. Yeah. Geralt. Geralt from the books. So many Witcher Three fans who never were a fan before saying he needs to look older or have a beard. That explains that. Yes. Uh, okay. I think it looks good. I don't know if I'm gonna watch it. I have no. Yeah, idea. I'm probably not gonna watch it. <laughs> um. Staying on topic of TV. Yes. Ubisoft is working on a script for Child of Light live action television show. Interesting. I have this game. I don't know why. I never played it. It seemed interesting to me. Yeah, it was one of those uh, UBR games where it was like looked all hand drawn. It was a Ubisoft indie game. Yeah. And this was one of the things that, this is one of the games that brought into question what an indie game really is. Yeah. Because freaking Ubisoft made it. Mm -hmm. It was published and developed by them. Writer Tasha Huo, who was appointed because her script was, quote, on point, is currently responsible for the Child of Light adaptation and is reportedly a longtime fan of the game. The plan is to recreate the playable fairy tale with a strong female heroine in live action form. Quote, we love that the game centers around Aurora discovering strength. I love video games and I'm passionate about them, but you want people who have never heard of these games to fall in love with them. How can you be a longtime fan of a game that's only four years old? It depends on if you think four years is a long time. All right. I I think we're going to get... I think we're very close to the point where video game adaptations are going to be good. Yeah. Because it's following the same trajectory as comic books. Kind of. For a long time, you couldn't make comic book adaptations. You would get, like, you got Superman, and then just nothing good. Right. And then you got Batman, and then nothing good. Right. And then and then you started to get Blade, X-Men, Spider-Man, Batman Begins, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think we're, I think we're coming on some, we're due for something that's going to be great. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So, so we we got uh, Castlevania. So hopefully this will be the next one. And the Sonic movie. And the Sonic movie. <laughs> and the Monster Hunter movie. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. And the guys who made the the great Resident Evil series. <laughs> Our dad in the chat says, "Vote. It's the most important game you'll ever play." <laughs> I hate this. Uh, I hate this. Um, he's also lying. He doesn't want any of these people to vote. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, tell me about the potential Winter Soldier Falcon TV show. Okay, so you remember a while back, I think we brought it up on the show, uh, there was rumored that Tom Hiddleston and uh, Elizabeth Olsen were going to reprise the roles of Loki and Scarlet Witch for separate TV shows. For the upcoming Disney streaming service? No, I don't remember this. Okay. (laughs) That was the thing. And now apparently, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier are also going to get the same treatment. 
Uh, Variety has learned exclusively that Malcolm Spellman has been tapped to write a series featuring the two superheroes, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, as played by uh, Anthony, Anthony Mackie. Mackie and uh, Sebastian, Sebastian Stan. Stan. Yeah, why did I fart on the names? I'm right, uh, I would oh. have farted, but I'm reading it. Yeah. So. Uh, f- it's currently in development. Uh, f- currently in development at the streamer. Their words. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. Um, but yeah, so they're developing uh, f- basically a mini series for the upcoming Disney streaming service based on those two characters. And Anthony this- Mackie and Sebastian Stan are expected to reprise their roles as those characters. That's a first. Yeah. Usually it's like a separate universe. Yeah. Or or they uh, have different actors. Yeah, no, it's supposed to be them. It's going to keep with the whole like Marvel Cinematic Universe, all one big thing. Um, Interesting. And this goes along with those rumors that Tom Hiddleston and Elizabeth Olsen are also going to get miniseries based on Loki and Scarlet Witch, respectively. So many miniseries. I know. Well, I think it's not a bad idea because if these are popular characters and you want to explore them, but you can't really do that like in the movies, like throw them on the streaming service. It'll give it'll a give people an incentive to subscribe, and b it'll give fans of these characters a chance to see them in like their own unique setting. I might watch a Winter Soldier series. Me too. I might be interested in that. Yeah, Winter Soldier solo stuff, especially Brubaker stuff, is great. This would sell a lot of people on that streaming service. Yes, I'm hoping that this leads because I f- I forgot her name, but they cast the girl from thir- apparently the girl from Thirteen Reasons Why. Is in Avengers Four, like that's confirmed. They haven't said who she's playing, so everybody just assumes she's playing Kate Bishop. Why? Because she looks like Kate Bishop. So I'm hoping if she is playing Kate Bishop, then you get her and Jeremy Renner their own show based on Matt Ooh, Fraction's Hawkeye. I would two w- Hawkeyes. Yeah. Call it Hawkeyes, plural. I wouldn't mind having a female Hawkeye. Yeah. They got to do something with Hawkeye because uh, Jeremy Renner, uh, not not the best Hawkeye. No. Not, it's not his fault. No, I just think that the, the character of Hawkeye in the Avengers isn't that good. Yeah. And they haven't done much with him. So do something with him. Throw Kate Bishop in there. That'd be yeah. awesome. I think, I think he needs a, his own chance at a solo adventure with... Okay. And pairing up with Kate Bishop would be great because, like, they're just so opposite right. each other. Catherine Langford is her name. She's from 13 Reasons Why. She's a fair skinned girl with dark hair. So, obviously, Kate Bishop. Langford? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, she could be anybody. I know. She could be literally anybody. <laughs> I know. But you know, the internet. True. All right. All right. That's it. Yeah. Uh, unboxing or Tweet of the Week? Unboxing, then Tweet of the Week. Okay. We got a bunch of stuff. We yes. got this from Guru Logic. No idea. Okay. I don't even think I've talked to these people. <laughs> they just unsolicited. Could be anthrax. Send you unsolicited goodies. I'll put my gloves on so I can properly. Oh, what the hell is this? Well, let me read the thing before we show okay. my camera. Uh, we would like to gift you these two sets of Switch Blades for Nintendo Switch. In about a week, we'll be launching a Kickstarter campaign. Let's just get this right out of, out of the way. They're not actual Switch Blades. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, for review, discuss, or product thor- thoroughly, uh, specifically for your YouTube channel. In addition through your social media of course only in in, okay 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 what is it the wooden switchblade is from our basic hardwood option Mm. made of redwood aka chakte cock k-o-k can i can i unbag which is native to yeah all right the other switch pair of switchblades our lava flows option is from our galaxy limited edition i think i get what these are I do. I remember now what they are. Yeah. That's gravelogic.com. So what you do, I'm going to grab my switch. All right. I'm going to zoom in. So it looks like these are just end pieces that you would slide. I got to take these gloves off because it's hard to hold these things. You slide these onto the side of your switch after you take your Joy-Cons off 
so you can put them in the dock or in tabletop mode. Here. These are made so that you don't get any dust or anything inside of the uh, yeah. sides of the switch. Oh, I like the wood ones. They're Here. nice looking. Uh, these are the instructions. There was my kickstand. <laughs> I don't need instructions. Maybe to take them off. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're a little hard to go in. They're a little thick. That's never coming off. <laughs> it looks cool. Yeah, it does. I think it looks cool. Looks nice. That's yeah. That's good if you want to if you keep your switch in your dock. There's a niche of people who play portably like this tabletop mode. Yeah, yeah. tabletop mode. So I could see this. Yeah, I think. And you're right. If if you leave your dock in your switch and you have your Joy-Con in like the grip or something, mm -hmm. maybe you need something to cover up the little dust yeah. thing. So this isn't a bad idea. These are these are fancy. These ones got like designs on them. I think it's excuse me. Well, that is. Uh, that is the lava flows option. Yeah, this looks like lava's flowing. So there is a, I could see a reason for this. Yeah, I would never use this. Me neither, because I just have the Joy Cons. I've time. almost exclusively play in portable mode, so yeah, I have no use for so, it. But I think there are, there's a, there's a market for something. There like is. This. Uh, this kickstand just doesn't want. It. Does your Switch do this? No. See, yeah, I get comments. People are like the kickstand isn't that bad. Blah blah. The problem, and I know this is the problem. Mm -hmm. When you when you replace the back plate, it makes the kickstand loose. Everybody who's played with the back plate, the kickstand yeah. just flies all over the place. So it's my fault. This is from our buddy Fred. Oh, I know exactly what it is. Is Can it more you one piece? What it, no, it's for me, Will. Uh, this time he's sending me something. What uh, box is this? Aki Bento. What is wrong with you, Fred? <laughs> Freaking weed. Do you have a knife? I didn't bring. I didn't think I, I would have, need it. I don't have. I can. I, I can do it, Will. All right. Well, yeah. Use that manliness. If you Today's know. the day, Will. It's Boku no Hero oh, One Justice for the Switch. Oh boy. Because Bandai didn't send it to me for. They actually re they sent me a rejection email. Really? Yeah. And guess who got one? AJ got one. What the hell, Will? They sent us to E3, but they wouldn't send us a copy of the game. I know. Wow. Wow, guys. But you know who did? Fred. Thanks, My Fred. Man. My Hero One's Justice. So, a, ba a bad name. Yes. But I want to play this because it's it, we played a little bit of it and I liked it a lot. So, aside from Labo, is this your first physical Switch game? Yep. Wow. This is my only physical Switch yeah. game aside from Labo. Uh, so, thank you, Fred. I think I'm in this game. Yes, I am in this game. Shoto Aozawa from the anime My Hero Academia is in My Heroes One Justice. Yeah. Give me your attention, class. Uh, Jordan Smith in chat says, Did you see that Nyko replacement kickstand? I've heard they cause the original kickstand to be loose. I did see it. I don't I feel like it's thicker. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's not gonna help. You don't need to display it. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, this last box, we can only show some stuff from it. Okay. So, uh, I thought this was going to be like an Amazon box. I was going to open it with my phone, but I don't know if I can. Give me one of these kickstands. Uh, give me one of these. I would give, grab you, the, a logic I would things. give you the battering, but it's it's foam. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, kids can throw it at each other. My review of the Gravelogic uh, uh, thing... Is that, that's a, <laughs> that's a bad box opener. I might actually break it. Oh, I did it. Okay. Okay. This is for my buddies at Satisfy, Will. Oh! Our, our best friends. God damn. My review of the Satisfy <laughs> grip is that the box needs to be easier to yeah. open without a knife. Box gets a 4 out of 10. <laughs> God. Can you help? No, I'm fine. <laughs> I hope this is loud for you guys. Yeah. All right, man. It is. People listening on iTunes, Spotify, uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, or Stitcher are going to love this. You know, I looked at our SoundCloud plays the other day. Not bad. Yeah. Got a, got a decent amount of uh yeah decent percentage of people who are listening to us. Last I checked, our Hello. iTunes were pretty good too. Can I show this on camera? 
Nope. <laughs> uh, but I can show this. All right, what is what is this? This is the mini oh. grip, the satisfied yes. mini grip. I've seen this. I saw them tweet this out. I've never seen this before. Really? I think he told me about it, but I have not seen it. Oh, I have seen this. This is a grip for it's, the Joy-Con. It's their version of the Joy-Con grip, but much like their Switch grip, it uh, the right analog stick is offset. Where's the my other Joy-Con? I don't know. It's your Joy-Con. Did you just open a oh, box? It's behind me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like their Satisfy grip for the Switch, right? But the right side is offset. Yeah, which is so, good because that's a better zoom, place. Zoom in on this. Zoom on this bad boy over here. Zooming in. So the right is offset so your thumb can rest better on the analog stick. Yes. Cool. Yeah. That is, yes. I heard people say that you can't really get to the face buttons yeah. as easily. First of all, if you're playing something like Fortnite, which is, yeah. I have the Satisfy Grip in my Fortnite video, mm -hmm. you're not really touching those buttons as yeah. much. Uh, so the priority should be the thumbstick. Yeah. This the satisfied grips makes the priority the thumbstick. Yeah. So I like that the most. Yeah, this is smart. Yeah. I wouldn't like I don't know if you should use this for games where you're mostly gonna be touching yeah, face that's buttons. The thing. Like, like, for, like for Mario Odyssey. Well <laughs> No, Mario because Mario Odyssey you use the you control the camera a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. Like most games like that use dual analog stick for like movement and camera controls. Something like this is great. Cause then like when you have to take your thumb off, you're just doing it real quick and then you're moving back to the how analog quickly, stick. How does it feel getting to the A button? It's fine. A little more travel. Looks like a little, a little bit more travel. travel, yeah. But it, you know, it's it's not the end of the world. I think I for third person and uh first person games. Yeah. This isn't a bad option. If you need a grip, this, yeah. is a, this is a good idea. I should note, I don't believe this is a charging grip. No. It's just a regular grip. It's a regular grip. Yeah. But it has the lights on it like the like the other grip. Does. Yeah, because uh, you can see like the, the mirror or whatever it is that like the light from the Joy-Cons shines through. Right. So yeah. you can see like what control, which, yeah. which controller it is and stuff. Oh, it doesn't make that k sound. <laughs> oh, so sorry. I guess that's trademarked. Uh, the see the kid game says talk about the Smash League. No, rewind the podcast. Yeah. Um, that's all the unboxing stuff we had to do. Okay. Check out satisfygaming.com. Yeah, sounds right. It'll be in the description when I if I remember to put it mm -hmm. in there. Now we can do the tweet of the week. Well, tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Uh, this one is from Sonic underscore Hedgehog. Will, I'm going to need you to say it with me. Okay. One, two, three, four. Follow me. Feed me treats. Walk me and we will escape from the city. And it's a picture of a Shiba Inu and a Sonic <laughs> hat or mask or something. Yeah. And apparently that is official Sonic merchandise. I believe it. It's a Sonic costume for your, do your doge. <laughs> I, I believe it. Yeah, the, the first reply is Aaron Weber, the f social media guy for Sonic Team. Uh, also, yes, this is official Sonic dog costume, and it's on Amazon. <laughs> he should have linked it. Yeah. And he should have put an affiliate link on that bitch. Uh. <clears throat> All right, guys, now is when we talk to you guys. Yes. As always, you can reach us on Twitter using the hashtag WolfDenLive. If you left a comment on last week's WolfDenLive video, uh, now is the time where we will answer it. And ladies and gentlemen, if you were watching this as we speak... Start writing your questions. We will get to them when we're done with everybody else. Fred picked a couple of short ones. Okay. Uh, which is great. More GemX says, can you make a video about the Switch drifting Joy-Con problem? Is that a problem? I've never heard of it before. Other than, I mean, it might be a problem. Joy... Analog sticks drift. Yeah. That's just a problem that analog sticks have. I remember back in the day with like GameCube and like PlayStation 2 yeah. and stuff, it would happen all the time if you left your controller upside down yeah. and if you turned the system on. Mm -hmm. So don't do that. Yeah. Don't ever leave your controller on the floor upside down. They should always be left like face up, never face down. Yeah, because if it's face down, then you're pushing against the, one yeah. of the analog sticks. They used to have ways to cal recalibrate them. I don't think they do anymore. The Switch has a calibration thing in its settings, I yeah. think. 
And apparently that doesn't fix the issue. Hmm. So I have heard about this. <laughs> but I don't think it's a wi- as widespread. I think it's just a normal thing that happens yeah. with analog sticks, you know? Um, Ian Pittman says the Topeka joke is from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. I, I think I see Yeah, that. we weren't sure, but... Now it's confirmed. Yes. Apparently it's hot in Topeka. That's what it is. Yeah. So I think somebody else commented that. Muhammad, Al- Muhammad Ali. Ally, right? Let's say you say Ally. Yeah, Muhammad Ali is A L I, right? Yeah. Okay. Two comments. Are you serious? There are 21 comments. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's definitely a friend note. <laughs> um, C418 V G Y T R E. Honestly, it would be amazing if they would be able to port Fantasy Star Online to the Switch with working online still. It would be amazing if they would port Fantasy Online Fantasy Star Online to the Switch with working online and that the original Dreamcast version and GameCube versions all somehow could get oh, online. Oh, yeah. that would never happen. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> That that would be definitely part of the Sega Ages yeah. situation because they uh they're the ones who are uh doing stuff like that now mm-hmm. modernizing old games or yes. adding stuff I guess. Joel DePina, I'd toss a hot dog in a hallway for uh, Crazy Taxi on the Switch on the Swick. <laughs> uh so yeah, I think that's comment of the of the week right there. I don't have a chance for that. You gotta no, give me no, time. No, yeah. I, you, you gotta, gotta work on a jingle. Yeah, you know, if we're gonna start doing comment on the week, it can't be the same as tweet. We're week. not. Okay. We're not. Okay. I'm just saying that was a good comment. Yes. I would. Uh, let me read it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe it didn't process. I'd toss a hot dog in a hallway for a crazy taxi on the Swick. Comment of the week. <laughs> work in progress. You you did that pretty quickly. Thank you. Oh, we didn't do a uh, hashtag Wolf Down Live. No, we didn't. Well, maybe we should do it this way more often. It gives people the time to do the hashtag. Uh, when was last week even? That was the 24th. 24th, so, yeah. Simone and Stig, what do you think about the Apple announcement made this week? I love the new iPad Pro. Probably should have talked about this on the podcast. And yeah, I thought it was fine. Um... Uh yeah, I got nothing really to say. I'm not, not. I wasn't interested in any of like in buying any of these things they they were going to announce anyway. Three. There were three things. Yeah. The uh, the uh, the MacBook Air got an update. Yeah. Which never care about the MacBook Air. The Ma- well, we were never the demographic for the MacBook Air. Right. Yeah. Correct. So, uh, like m- my mom, my mom, not your mom. Right. <laughs> would get the MacBook Air, but like, yeah. It's a very niche thing because, like, it's for people who don't do a lot on their laptop. It's yeah. for people who may, mainly just do internet stuff and maybe some light other things. Yeah. Um, but it's very expensive. It is. I mean, it's cheaper than a lot of other things that they have. But yeah. like, if you're gonna get uh, an internet browsing machine, it's it's expensive for something that doesn't do so, so much. Yeah. It's cool because it's so thin and stuff. Yeah. But uh, I feel like it, I. Not not my cup of tea. Yeah, no. Uh, the, the Mac Mini is cool if you need to furnish an office. Yeah, you know, if you need to, if you like, I got a, I'm hiring ten people and they all need Macs. Yeah, you just throw some Mac. Throw them there. Uh, you still need to get, of course, the monitor, the computer, uh, right, the keyboard, you just, you just the cheap mouse. Cheap out on that stuff. Yeah. Um, it also, got, it, it got a significant upgrade in in hardware, so yeah. you can run like video editing stuff on also, there. Also, uh, like, home theater PC wouldn't be bad for that. Yes. You just stick it in your entertainment center and just set it and forget it. It's a great cheapo desktop. Yes. For, again, people who aren't doing too much. Exactly. Like Dad. He's, he's, got, yeah. he's got an iMac. But uh, if you haven't used to upgrade that, throw a Mac Mini over there. Yeah. You know, why not? It should be fine. Um, and then the iPad stuff, it was all just iPad Pro, right? Yeah. It was all stuff they did. I think it is awesome. I'm a big fan of the iPad Pro because yeah. for drawing, uh, I have the original launch iPad Pro, and there's no reason for me to upgrade because that thing still runs fantastic. Yeah. But the new one looks really cool. There's barely a bezel. Yeah, there's, I don't like this whole no home button situation. Yeah, though. it's like Face ID and stuff. Yeah, but you never me. really use the home button, I guess, on an iPad. Yes, on a giant iPad. Yeah. 
the Apple Pencil looks cool. I'm curious to know what's so different about it because apparently the old Apple Pencil doesn't work on the new iPad. Uh, and the new iPad Apple Pro. Pencil won't work on old iPads. Right. So yeah. I want to know what's so different about yeah. it. Other than there's also you double tap, there's like a double tap button. Okay. Which is cool, but I wish it was a button button. Yeah. Or like at least a button you can hold and not just double tap. Also, the iPad Pros are USB C, not Lightning. Yes. Which is cool because you can charge your phone from it. Yes. Which, because my iPad Pro, the battery is phenomenal. Yeah. And being able to use that to charge my phone would be amazing. Mm -hmm. my, my my biggest problem is, well, there's no headphone jack. So that's like almost immediately yeah. no thank you. Because I use my iPad Pro sometimes to watch movies on planes and stuff. Yeah. Um, for all the planes I go on. Um, there's a camera on it. Yeah. Which is fine, except there's a camera bump on the back. Yeah. Which at that point, why have the camera? Yeah, like, I feel like... The fraction of a millimeter that it would have taken to like make the iPad Pro that much bigger so there's no camera bump, like is not a big deal. There's also the headphone jack's gone, not because they wanted to make it thinner. Yeah. It's just there's no reason for the headphone jack to be gone. Yeah. Like on the, a phone, they wanted to make the phone thinner. Right. Understandable. Or or waterproof. Or both. But on an iPad Pro, no reason to do that. Yeah. Um there was a reason, Bob. Courage. Courage. They had the courage to do yeah. it. Um I, I think it was an awful move to keep the the camera on the back and make it a bump. The, yeah. The MKBHD said, I guess people scan documents with it and stuff. Yeah. No, people use the camera on the back of the iPad. Everybody who has an iPad Pro is going to have a phone with, an, with a significantly better camera. True. So just if, they're, if you're going to scan a document, do it on your phone and airdrop it over. The... I don't have a problem with them having a camera on the iPad. I think it makes sense. iPads have had cameras since the first one. I just feel like from a design point of view, there shouldn't be a camera bump. There are ways to right. eliminate it, and they didn't use any of those Or ways. give it a crappier camera. No one is buying this thing for the upgraded camera. Right. You know? It's just for the fact that... People it's, are it's really buying it because it's just as powerful as an Xbox One S. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. They did say that, and they, the people are all oh, throwing shade at Xbox. Yeah, but the thing is, a thousand dollars. Yeah, so like that's why. Yeah, Xbox One S. I got mine for two hundred. Yeah, and did you see what uh, Phil Spencer said about it? What? Oh, cool. We can do crossplay then. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, no, nobody's people were knocking Huawei more than they were knocking uh, Apple for that. Yeah. Huawei. They said that thing about the Switch. They said oh, our yeah. phones is as powerful as the Switch. More powerful than the Switch. Yeah. It's also four times the price. Yeah. The problem with the camera bump is that if I'm going to draw and I'm going to lay the, the iPad flat, yeah. it's going to wobble. Yeah, no, the cam there's a the thing. The camera bump is a problem that they could have easily fixed. I would love one of these iPads, but I'm not paying another $1,000. My iPad Pro is just fine. I'm debating whether or not to get another iPad, but I, I would not get a Pro. Mm -hmm. I would probably just get like the basic iPad. The USB-C is cool that you can plug it into a yeah. freaking monitor and stuff. Mm -hmm. we're nearing the point where ipads and laptops are emerging yeah and i can't wait the singularity the singularity yeah. because one day we're just gonna be walking around with tablets uh tablets are useless right now except for ipads yeah like all these other tablets all, that come all out, the tablets suck yeah yeah the surface is the singularity yeah they need to just put a freaking touch screen in, in these mm -hmm. and then we're set yeah then i'm good then I don't need two freaking devices. All right, let's plow through these. Right. Uh, little skeet skeet. What does my bro T? <laughs> God damn it! What? It what it <laughs> you go, you go. What it does my bro teen shakes. Mm. I'm curious. What games came out that were universally hated but you loved, and vice versa? Talked about one before. That were universally loved and oh, that were Sorry, that were universally hated but we loved and vice versa what did i talk about before that was not a good game but i liked there's a couple i can think of there was a wolverine game like a age like when x2 came out that everybody like gave bad reviews to but i thought it was pretty good mm. i thought you know it was a nice you know wolverine centric game where mark hamill played wolverine for some reason i mean there's definitely games that i love that everybody hates yeah. oh bomberman r <laughs> yeah, just right off the top of my head, um, Cyborg Justice. Yeah, we loved that growing up. That mm -hmm. game sucks. 
Uh, there's this game on PS2 called Spy Fiction that I kind of like because it was basically a modern version of Mission Impossible on N64. I liked Spy Hunter, which got awful reviews. The the PS2 spent, yeah. right? I think that game was... I don't remember if that game was reviewed well or not. I know all the Spy Hunter games that came after it were not. Like the one with The Rock. Mm. So... It was a PS2? Yeah, PS2. Spy Hunter on PS2. I barely played it. Yeah. But I... I we I, have two I, copies of it for some reason. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but I remember I was like, this is fun. Yeah. But then the reviews, I was at, oh no, 82 yeah. on Metacritic. You know, it was a game that like we both really liked, but like doesn't didn't ever really got great reviews. The Gungrave games. Yes. Both of them. Those got bad reviews. Yeah. But, but those were great. How could you, how could you hate that? Kick yeah. their ass. Kick their ass. It was good. Those yeah. games were good. Those games There's were good. There's plenty of games yeah. that we love that are universally hated. And then there are plenty of games that are universally loved that we hated. Oh, there's a lot of that yeah. going on. Like, Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time, famously. <laughs> uh, Borderlands can suck it. I liked Borderlands. Uh, Borderlands can suck it. <laughs> uh, f- I, before I said I liked Bulletstorm. Yeah. And that w- wasn't received well. Mm-hmm. But it was good. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Mint Man. Hey, guys. Hi. Do you have any opinions on the new iPads? No headphone jack. Oh, well, we just did. Now that I think about it, there really is no excuse for the iPads not to have a headphone jack either. That's what I was... Yeah. yeah the, that's that was what I said before. Yeah. That uh, it was... It's it's not for the thinness. Eventually, the MacBooks are not going to have headphone jacks. And that's Yeah, all the MacBooks problem. have headphone jacks. This thing has three inputs. Yeah. A headphone jack and two USB-Cs. Mm-hmm. Listen, I'm fine with the USB Cs. Yeah, that's okay. Fine with like, it. I understand that. Give, g- do not touch my precious headphone jack. Yeah, it's very important to me. Because like everything still runs on headphone jacks. I Justine was like, I'm totally. She's like, it's your problem if you if you need the headphone jack. I'm totally uh, headphone jack free right now. I use Bluetooth, whatever. And then she says, there is a slight delay. So when I'm editing, it's weird, but uh, you get used to it. Yeah. I, I was like, that's not a good excuse. I use, like, I have Bluetooth headphones and I use them for, like, when I'm, you know, out doing work and stuff and I don't want to be tangled up in a wire. Or, like, if I'm in my car, I use Bluetooth there. But if I'm editing or, like, if I need to, like, you know, to make sure the sound is, like, perfect, then, like, yeah, wired headphones. I don't like wireless headphones. I think they're needlessly complicated. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not walking around. I'm not going to be far away from the device that I have them plugged into. Mm-hmm. So why not just have a, a wire? You know, that's my mentality. Right. Well, I mean, Bluetooth, like Bluetooth speakers are great because like you can just turn your phone on from like the other room and start playing music. Like an Alexa is cool. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um and like yeah, Bluetooth headphones are one thing. Like if you're running or if you're doing like work and stuff, but like otherwise, yeah, you can't beat a wired headphone. All right, now I'm in the chat. Okay. Speaking of wired headphones, I'm sorry. Now I'm backing up. I have those Shure headphones. So here's the deal. I okay. talked about this in a video once. I have these Shure. I used to play the drums with these Shure headphones that were like a hundred bucks, and they were yeah. amazing. I love these. They were earbuds. I'm a big fan of earbuds. I don't like over-the-ear headphones because they press down on my forehead. Yeah. My forehead, my the top of my head, scalp. Also, if if they're noise canceling, they make me feel weird. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I get like weirdly dizzy. So I like earbuds. Uh, I had these shores that I used to play the drums with. They were amazing. They started to crap out after like eight years or something ridiculous. Yeah. So I got the newer versions that also had a mic because I was like, oh, I can use these for my phone. Uh, they're not as good as the old versions. Mm. Our friend Mike was he did. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but he did work on. Uh, a campaign for Shore, right. the company, and they gifted him headphones, and he showed them to me, and I was like, "These are amazing! I want these! I'm going to buy these right now!" And then I looked them up, three hundred dollars. Ooh, not buying them. Yeah, but they're also Bluetooth, mm. and they plug in. Okay. If you want to plug them in, you can plug them in, but they're Bluetooth. They're basically in your monitors. Okay, and I want them. There's a cheaper version for a hundred dollars that I might get, but it might not. I mean, I already have Shore yeah. headphones, so I don't know. But I'm interested in the Shore headphones. Uh, Bradical, one uh, 1991 says Will's hate for Borderlands makes me rage. Destiny is Borderlands light. Effing guy. <laughs> I don't like Destiny either. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't like. I like Destiny and Borderlands. Yeah. So I don't know what you want here. He he doesn't like any of that. Stuff. I hate I hate everything that makes you happy. <laughs> 
Uh, Tide Master Tim, LOL, for some reason my live stream wasn't up to date. I was commenting on Henry as Geralt, LOL. Yeah. Sometimes you got to slam that live button, but if you do it now, we'll probably be all, we'll probably be not streaming anymore, yeah. so don't do that yet. Um, Control 64 says, if it's on my head, it must not be wireless. I don't get it. Uh, Grim Hain says, you guys are on the wrong side of history. Wireless headphones are the future. Um, look, I'm not, I'm not he, against wireless headphones and I agree with you that they are the future, but wired headphones are still a necessity and are still, and will probably be, still be part of the future. It's such a small input. Yeah. I mean, you know what? I would, if every manufacturer out there decided, you know what? We're going USB-C for our headphones. Yeah. I'd be fine with that. I mean, I get it. Like. Three the three point five millimeter headphone jack is analog and it's a dying technology and we really sort of should have switched to a digital format like years ago. But it works. <laughs> yeah, I need headphones I can plug in. Yeah. So, like, right now I on my headphones in my little headphone. Well, not uh, yeah, in my headphone bag. I have a lightning adapter, so if yeah. I need to take it with me, I can do mm-hmm. that. And you know what? Fine. But um. Then I need USB C adapters and stuff. Yeah. I need one. It needs to be one universal port. Yeah. You can't have all of this crap. So yeah. if if they're gonna take my freaking headphone jack away from a Mac, my MacBook, then you gotta put USB C in this. Yeah. The Cyberquick says, I hate that phrase. Wrong side of history. You're on the wrong side of history. You yeah. gotta get on top of the you gotta get on our side of the yeah. phrase wrong side of history. Tide Master Tim says, what kind of scarf are you wearing? I'm wearing the scarf that Shoto Ayozawa wears from My Hero Academia. So there. Um, Silent Hero says, do you guys play PC games as well? Rarely. Yeah, very rarely. Mainly because we both have Macs and like there aren't a lot of... Yeah. I mean, there are. Like, I got plenty of games on here. Well, I can... We're on the stream on a PC right now. If I needed to play a PC, I I could, but I almost never want to. I think the only, like, games I've ever, like, truly played on this is, like, Jedi Knight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I used to play a lot of PC games, but, uh... There's nothing that... There's nothing recently... In the past, like, year, there's been nothing where I'm like, I need to play this on PC. I think I played Mass Effect Andromeda on PC, because that's just the code they gave me, but, uh... I played it with a controller. Yeah. So. Brooks says, great costume, Bob. Thank you, Brooks. <laughs> Mr. Brock Rock, no Symphony of the Night on PS Classic. Any chance we get a port on Switch? Um, yeah, so Castlevania Symphony of the Night is one of those games that like best on the PlayStation, not on the PlayStation Classic. They just made a collection with that and Rondo of Blood. But it's a port of a PSP collection of those two games. That's weird because that's Konami and they already got Metal Gear. Yeah. That's so, so weird. But as to if it goes on the Switch or not, I feel like they'll we'll just get like the Xbox 360 version of Symphony of the Night on Switch. We won't get that collection with Rondo in it. I think you were right when you said that they cheaped out. Yeah. And they just got whatever games they can get for the cheapest yeah. licensing. Pizza Salami, A.O., says hey do i understand that wrong that bob that you bob do drawings if you go to the playlist of wolf den live and you look at all the thumbnails that's some me drawing mm-hmm. and i do that on the ipad pro using clip studio you're gonna use uh photoshop on the full photoshop comes? i'm gonna definitely try it out i'm very yeah. interested in that and and they demoed it on the old ipad so on yeah. the old ipad pro so i'll definitely be able to use it i'm gonna read one more and you read one more okay Brangus. Oh, you read the one I was going to read. <laughs> Pick another one. Right. Where do you think the Zelda series will go since Breath of the Wild? Uh, I think they're going to make another game in the Breath of the Wild engine. Similar It'll to... Definitely be in the engine, yeah. Similar to Ocarina of Time and... Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask, yes. They should do... If you ever look at the concept art for Breath of the Wild, they have that one that's like a... He's like a teenager. Yeah. He's like a t-shirt and jeans. He's like with the leather jacket and stuff. They should do that. I kind of, yeah, I kind of want it. There was one where it's going to be like uh, cyberpunk, I think. Mm-hmm. I want that. Like that interests me very much. I'm also going to read this, Eric Henley. I'm going to trick or treat in my Wolf Den apparel. I'm a snack for Halloween. Here's a little <laughs> update for everybody. November 19th, new apparel release. Again, new apparel. Ooh. 
and there's going to be things that are not that expensive. Yeah. So, everybody look out for that. I put in the order yesterday. Uh, all right. Mr. Brock Rock. Well, I watched the Sabrina series. I really liked it, but thought the ending was a little off from the rest of the series. So I didn't finish the series. As I said in, in my video, I'm only a few episodes in, but I like it. Um, my understanding is that they broke the season up into two parts. So we got the first 10 episodes now, and we're going to get the next 10 episodes in a couple of weeks or months. So they, they intentionally left it on a cliffhanger. This is not the end of the season, which Netflix has been doing a lot lately. Like they will break up the season and try to pass it off as two separate seasons. That's dumb. They did it with Voltron and they're doing it with this. That's dumb. Yeah. Fred showed me this show called SSSS Gridman. It's an anime. Do you know what this is? Isn't I, that you know what this is? Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. Oh, yeah. yeah. I saw it and I was like, wait. First of all, the anime shows nothing yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, it's just kids, you know, blah, 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 whatever. And then, like, you see a giant monster, and then you it's, see... It's an anime of it. Yes. It's not a kaiju yes. or whatever. You see it's a giant progress. monster, then you see Gridman, and I'm like, wait a second, I know that. Yeah. I've seen that before. And, yeah. But Superhero and Samurai, Cyber Squad, and Gridman have nothing to do with each other. Yeah. It's just Gridman and the samurai guy thing. Yeah. Well, that's like... Servo, I think is his name. Servo, yeah. Uh, yeah. They're the same character they're the same looking character but they have nothing to do with each other well that's like uh super sentai and power rangers exact exact same thing yeah, yeah. but well it's like a, another step removed because Gridman isn't in cyberspace and he's always shown in cyberspace yeah so it's like okay weird but this is an anime on Gridman. okay and i'm interested in that i'm i might have to check that out all right okay thank you for hanging out thank you for tuning in Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, Wolf Den Live is every single Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern right here on YouTube.com slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, maybe you're out trick-or-treating tonight because it's Halloween. Um, <laughs> we always put this up as an archive version on Thursday. It's for you to watch on demand whenever you want. Also on YouTube.com slash Wolf Den. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We are an audio podcast on apple Podcasts, soundcloud google play and stitcher and if you listen to us on any of those platforms please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on those respective stores somebody asked me in the chat i forgot who if i like procreate uh i loved procreate i mean i like the app procreate yeah. but uh brooks in the chat actually uses procreate but i like clip studio i switched to clip studio because it's okay. more like photoshop i owe you two bucks over there our dad's walking by <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us on this episode of Wolf Den Live. Yes. I will be uh, streaming the Nintendo Direct at 10 a.m. That means I'll be rolling out of bed and hitting live, and I will be live with Dan of uh, that cyber channel and AJ of Fanatics 4. I will not be there. So just watch his stuff. Twitch. Admire his handiwork. Twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. Thank you for being here on Halloween. We will see you later. Class is dismissed. Goodbye.